right, let's do a cheers to the Sobeys and Sip with a Computer for the Podcast. The ride again. <laughs> I love you guys. Careful. That takes hot. Good morning and happy Monday, or is it Monday, <laughs> April Fools? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we got that. We got the most hilarious April Fools. It might be Tuesday, is it? I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, Lieutenant Eric, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I'm a, I'm uh, not Lieutenant Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I got you very quick. Uh, EST is canceled as of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh my God! He tried to uh, Eddie, I didn't get my pay stub prior to the weekend. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. send that one again there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. did he or did we get paid? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, man, it's one of those days. It's one of well, those uh, days. YouTube Trev striking oh, first. Man, eh? yeah, I, yeah, I tell you, uh, you know what? It's nice to still be gotten, right? It's nice to still have somebody get you. Driving in today, just uh, just pulling in, just pulling up the street, and I get a text message at five twenty six from Trev goes, "Don't know if I can make it in today, man." And I instantly was like, "What the? F-? Like, if you're sick, text the night before. Like, then we can get Zach to come in, or Maddie can slide in." And then I said, "Well, well, I don't want to wake up the other guys now. Like, I'm just gonna have to somehow opt the show while we're doing the show." Sure. Uh, and I was I was in full blown panic mode. I replied to him. I was like, "Sick?" Question mark. I mean, I don't know what else. And uh, <laughs> Sick. yeah. And then he he replies. He goes, "JK April Fools, LOL." And he got me. I mean, nobody else is gonna get me today. I'm aware of it now. That's when you got you got to strike early like that, right? He's sick, sick with that April that April flu. Hey, yeah, yeah. I get it. No. Got RCN says I'm pregnant. <laughs> 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 oh, there's, there's hilarious jokes everywhere. Send in your uh, send in your hilarious April Fool's jokes. 780-218-9999. I like Tommy walking in this morning at like 8.30 and be like, nope, April Fool's, and walking right back <laughs> out. You know, like. I can see Tommy texting in the same joke as Trev today that says, hey, guys, I can't make it. But then Tommy just doesn't show. You know, I, could, I could definitely see something like that. Uh, 780-218-9999. Retro Oiler 99 says, still got the charge going. April Fools is come. I, I well, still do, like I haven't shaved. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna kind of let it grow in, I guess. There are a few in the sporting world that were celebrating uh, the end of Charge over the weekend. I could tell, namely one Joe Gomez. But uh, no, it's good to have this thing off. Loving it. Back to my. <laughs> yeah, I, you I look did. good. You look I good. Didn't like so, uh, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on there? Uh, I love this one. This text comes in. No name on this text. Mark Stone cleared to play for game one. <laughs> <laughs> 
April Fools until it's a series against the others, and that is what happens. And the entire city's in full blown meltdown. All right, we've got we've got lots to get to as we work our way through the show. Who works today? Like we're working today, yeah. but like I we, I never understand who's working and who has the who has the extra like back in the corporate days hmm. we always work today. Well, but is it like just who has today off? Is it like teachers and union workers or Tommy Rebella says conch everyone's stuck at work on an Easter Monday, ah. please. Even the savages down stateside with me who don't get Easter Monday as a holiday. So, Americans uh, are savages. Savages. <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> but uh so yeah, who 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 works? Who doesn't work today? How's that work? I don't recall a job, whether unionized or not that unionized. Had had a, I, I I replied to Tommy Bell. I don't think since elementary school have I got an Easter Monday off. Like I don't re- recall in the adult version of myself no, having like, an Easter Monday. Like the kids are off today. Yeah. But, so teachers are off today at school. Hey, you gotta, but that's uh, like, yeah, like a week, right? Yeah, it's that's Easter week. Or Easter. Does anybody else have today off? City workers, maybe city, that's the biggest. City workers, fool. government workers must have today off. Do they even though? They must. They must. Uh, Retro Oiler ninety nine says Ontario doesn't work. Alberta mostly does, except schools. Uh, T Wilson says I'm a union worker working today. Uh, Georgia Satellite, who's down the state, says against my better judgment, I'm working today. Retro Oiler ninety nine says he's at work. Joel from Northern Ontario says mechanics work. Uh, Zulu says, I work like some schmo. So, yeah, I never, I don't know if there's a, like, there's no, it's just like. No rules. You can, oh, it's, it's a mixed bag day. Have a little respect out there, I guess, is what we're trying to like, yeah, somebody Some people may be working today. It's, I mean, be nice to them. Just, yeah. For example, I mean, if somebody's working today and you have the ability to give them a thumbs up. Just yeah. give them a thumbs up today. Give them a little Easter. Right? Easter it's thumb. Hammer the, uh, hammer the thumbs up on the uh, the nasty chat today. Uh, Northside Sandwich says, I work for the Alberta government, and I am at work. Man, if the government doesn't get today off, then who, who gets today off? Strummy's in and says, I'll be working the morning of my funeral. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, 780-218-9999. Library Pat says, I'm not working today. <laughs> well, and I'm assuming go. Pat works at a library. So our library workers... Off today. Maybe he's just got standard day off, though. Maybe like Monday's his day of the week. <laughs> like, well, that's the thing. What is this? With Easter Wayne's Monday. sports just, cards? I like off. Wayne's is always closed on Monday. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Millwood's Matt is in and says, it's normally a stat holiday for my job, but I'm working today because it's double overtime day. Oh, man. Opportunist. Bob Law in Lloyd says, the office is closed today. Designated day off for staff. I am in. Only one as I am a contractor in the oil industry. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. We are uh we're figuring it out. We're gonna get to the we're gonna get to the bottom of this today. Who's working and who's not on this wonderful April Fools today? And, and why? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, too. I mean, that too. I mean, we we've got lots we can get to, but uh oil patch Dan says out in the oil patch today, boys. I I, I assumed I mean, oil patch Dan. JT Shark says, I work in hotels, so I work every day, bank a holiday. See, can't you just use your bank day today, though, and be like, I'm banking my day off today? I mean, you could do that. Uh, you could do that if you wanted. Easter Mondays aren't untouchable, eh? No, I don't think so. We know one guy who's working today, and that'd be Ryan Rashog. Ryan Rashog, he's going to join us today. Take Easter Mondays Mike off. Johnson's going to join us today because hey. the media never rests. No. <laughs> uh, Hey, you're wearing sandals today. I sure am. Oh, and shorts too. Berkies. No, oh, no oh, pants. Short pants. Uh, you know, just those sandals do look very comfortable. Get into it. Well, I, I hate socks. I feel very restricted with them. So anytime I cannot. And now, I mean, this is it. I, I don't know. R.I.P. to the O.D.R. But uh, we yeah, are sitting pretty good. here over the next little while. <laughs> like, my my running joke with Tam is every day I'll go stand at the back window and look out and be like, might mix in a flood tonight. <laughs> And she just goes, shut up, you idiot. Well, today's the day to do it. See how many of those you can fit in yeah. by the end of today. She's going to look up. Well, I'm going to actually flood today. <laughs> That's the And the fool. whole thing you is are an the April fool. Fool's You joke. are the April Fool. Look at me. <laughs> I'll say it to the neighborhood. I'll sing it to the, I'll sing it to the trees. I'm an April's fool. Uh, let's see if we Thursday can, uh, overnight low minus one, so maybe you got a bit of a window. No, there, there's not. There, I don't think one there's. One last lap. I don't <laughs> think there's much of a window. This is great, baby. 19 tomorrow, like. 
Just got to get through Easter Monday here. And- 19 tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Man, there's got to be some there could be some golf courses that are I call that Stanley Cup playoff weather. Considering ripping the tarps off. Oh yeah. Barry's in and says, I have to go to work, but that doesn't mean I'll be working. Uh, uh, that's uh that's good. I got a I got a buddy who works night shift. And he's like, Oh, I'll get in around uh I'll get in around like nine, ten. I like that. Hang around for about half an hour, just hanging out with the guys. Go work for about two hours. Come back, take like a hour and a half, two hour lunch, have a nap, sleep for a bit, get up, work for another hour and a half, then just sort of chill for the last hour. I'm like, man, night shift is just night shift is just. I mean, yeah, it's it's perfect. Uh, Corey Bees says I'm working hard to qualify for a trip to Vegas. I see what you're doing. I there. like that. Yeah. That's good too. That's good too. Putting in those overtime hours. Uh, let's lay out. Let's lay out the show for you today here on a Monday. And uh, hey, hammer hammer the thumbs up. If you if if you want the Edmonton Oilers to be the St. Louis Blues tonight, you'll give us a thumbs up immediately. Mm. Yeah. Yo, a big big week of big boy hockey for the Oilers. Oh, this big boy big hockey. One. This is a big one. St. Louis, Dallas, and what's happening Friday night? Yes. Colorado Avalanche. It's be an avalanche warning. Dun 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 dun. That's exciting. Conch for a big week. Huge. Well, Morning Friday against the Avalanche, then Saturday in Calgary for a little oh boy. BOA. Oh boy. So, yeah. Uh, morning. Yeah, man. That's four back games, to back. six nights, yeah. baby. Like, here we go. I can already see the excuses against the Flames. Well, four and six. Mm. Some travel in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, morning announcements coming up here in just a little bit. I says, pardon? We'll go there around 6.30 today. Good, bad, and ugly from the weekend, 6.45 this morning. Mike Johnson is going to step in, drags his out in BC for the next few days. So he's going to join us later in the week. MJ, Mystic Mike himself, he's going to join us uh, just after 7 o'clock this morning. Cool bed hotline of the day. The key word for Vegas today, 7.30 Probably like 7.35. After a sports update at 7.30 today will be your key word for Vegas. maddie has got us a new list. Oh, very nice. You know what the best part is, though, is that and- he made the new list but forgot to switch the two guys' oil stream error and still had to go through and autocorrect it oh, just on that's his own. Gonna pain him, kill eh? him, it killed oh, him. Oh, yeah. He's like, uh, <laughs> I still have a- I said, well, you didn't fix that? You put off a new list and didn't fix it? Anyway, we are in our fourth <laughs> week of qualifying uh, and there are this week and three more weeks to go. So we're in week four, and there's four more weeks. Keyword coming up here around 7.30. Also, after we call our qualifier to be today's qualifier, we will announce the Nasty Club qualifier. You can go look in the rules and regs. Um, one member of the Nasty Club has been randomly drawn and is put in to the grand prize draw. Maddie ran the uh, random draw for that over the weekend. We got the name coming up today as well. So technically, you're going to hear the name of two qualifiers today here on the Nielsen Show. Pays to be a nasty, hey? It, do- it really does. It really does. So that's uh, that's nice to see. Uh, mm, that's good. We're going to dive into that around 745 today for the Italian Center Shop. And the boys got Paninos again. I'm excited about this. We got some paninos. We'll be diving into those around uh, 7.45 this morning. Uh, Kind of easy trivia for Mr. Mike's three questions too many for Park Mazda. The Got Your Back Monday morning mandate with Ryan Rashog. This guy will not stop sending us videos and pictures of his golf simulator in his garage. Brag much. Holy smokes. My God. Good for him, though. Finally has a talent. Like You know what I mean? He's kind of got it. I, uh, I like Shoggy using this a lot for like two months and then not being able to park his car, but also not finding time to play simulation golf for, for like eight more months. It's, it's, it's a sizable garage where you can do all this work and then huge, ultimately not enjoy garage, it afterwards. Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. no cars in there, also no golf taking place. Just a big project that he's kind of shuffled off to the side. Anyway, golf simulator update with Ryan Rashog, eight. 30, 8.25-ish this morning. And an orange and blue breakfast to get you ready for the Oilers and the Blues. We'll get into that around 8.40-ish, 8.45-ish today. And the wrap for William Huff. If you want your place to look as good as ours, you'll get it done at William Huff. You can text us anytime, 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. That gets you into the Paris Jewelers inbox. Go see our friends at PJ's. 22 locations across the country. That's real nice. And, of course, one awesome website, www.parisjewelers.com. They've got something for every budget. Flexible financing options. Do not pay until 2025 
if you don't want to. So we've got that going for us. And of course, the person who comes out, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little fuel for the text of the day fire coming up here in the morning announcements. But uh, great clip that we have. I think you'll be able to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, if you win text of the day today, you will win a gift certificate to A and W, where the buzz around our performance last week with the A and W song live in person is really uh, it's 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 rippling the corporate waves at A and W, creeping right up the charts ever so slowly. Yeah, but- it really is. <laughs> Uh, until April 14th, you can enjoy two A&W Mama Burgers for only nine ninety nine. Seasoned, grass-fed beef patty, top of pickles, onion, ketchup, mustard, teen sauce, all on a toasted sesame seed bun. Available participating A&W locations. And most A&W locations and drive throughs are open 24 hours a day. You know who's working today? People at A&W. Yep. And guarantee that here on an April Fool's Easter Monday. <laughs> All right, let's get in to your morning announcements today. Lots to get to in the world of sports over the weekend of morning announcements. Morning announcements today and every day brought to you by our partners at 100.3, The Bear, Uh, Edmonton's best rock. I saw videos popping up. On TikTok over the weekend of the boss, remember we were talking about the I boss. Saw those Did you see yeah, the boss? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the boss is out and about. He is out. Yeah, the, the, that huge ass grizzly bear down in uh, Boyd in, in Banff. No, no, no. Oh, the bear. No, the the bear. Not not the guy who's the boss at the bear. Uh, <laughs> the bear, Stinky. the boss is uh, is out and about, and he's huge. And since we talked about him, I've been having because usually my TikTok feeds all lions killing other animals, and sometimes cubs. Lion cubs, if you can believe this. Um, I've been getting a lot of grizzly videos on TikTok lately too, and I got a lot of time for those too. They're eating salmon. You see the way you see we see the way these bears eat a salmon. It's savage. They just I like f- four bite it. It's insane. Uh, it's it's tough to watch. Like if you're if you're into the like you know like when I watched it, I was getting goosebumps. I'm like that would suck to be that salmon right now because exactly. he's just toying with them, absolutely yeah. toying with them. Like you're like, oh, I'm alive, and then you're bitten in half. That would suck. Imagine something so big, an animal so big, that they could do that to us. Like bite us in half. That'd be nuts. It's if a praying mantis was like larger, a larger praying like mantis. A, exactly, yeah. Eric. That's exactly what it would be. Uh, the the Edmonton Oilers taking care of business against the Ducks. Trev, you were at the Kings game. Were you were you at the Kings game? Is that what that was? That that must have been a good game to be at. It was a really good game. I, uh, did you pig out in the sports night lounge? Oh yeah, I had two plates. Just two plates. Yeah, two yeah, plates. yeah, two yeah. plates. I did you try to, to take nice. some home? Like, did you? Say, Can I get a container? <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? Can I, I, I get this? Can I get out this to go, please? Yeah. that's not how this works. Um, yeah, it was a solid game. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I was a few beverages in, but it was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. I was able to scout out Tommy in the in the press box. So that was okay, kind of cool. Yeah, crept on him a bit. Um, I like that. Yeah, a little bit. And then uh, yeah, just a just a good. Good solid victory from the the looks of it. I wasn't able to chime in on uh, the post game, but uh, had a lot of fun. Ran into some buddies after the game where we we closed down the Marriott afterwards. What? So that was pretty cool, and uh, yeah, just a great experience. Wow, good. I'm glad you had uh, glad you had a good time. The Oilers. It was funny coming out of that game against the Kings. I don't want to take anything away from the victory, but I saw people saying the Oilers' structure was the best that it's been, which I I mean I get. But I think it's easy to have a good defensive structure against the Los Angeles Kings because they don't do anything. Yeah. Like, of course you're going to look like a good defensive team when you're playing the Kings. Oh, they, 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 they send, like, one guy and they lurk around. I mean, so big win against the Kings for sure. But I, I thought some of the takes of the Oilers' defensive structure is locked in now. I thought that was a little weird after a game against the Kings in which – the Kings don't force you to do anything really defensively. Yeah, when you're up three nothing on a, yeah. <laughs> on a team, yeah, even one nothing like, would be. Um, yeah, they they got it. They took care against the Ducks. Time. I mean, that's something well, yeah. that again you have to. But you have to do these things again. Matinees at home against lesser than, but they're here. They did it. No a nice afternoon down there. for piling up points for certain individuals on the team. And as I said, away you go. You got the final like month now, three quarters of a month, however many games and twenty some days, four and six this week against some. Heavy, heavy opposition. Should be interesting. But taking care of business over the weekend. And this morning now, Vegas occupying the number three spot in the Pacific. And the Kings down to wild card two. With the Blues five points. Back. Oilers, Golden Knights. Round one. Ding, ding. Uh, that would be that would be something. Just how healthy can the Golden Knights get on uh, short notice? 
Uh, we'll see, you sketchy bastards. Morning, boys. Alpha quiet about Duke's elimination this morning. How bad oh, no, no, they no, looked. No, no, no. I'm going. We're going flies right there. in from Cal in the park. That's exactly where I'm going next. It's on the list. It's on the list. I wanted to go Oilers because if we came in and talked March Madness well, off the top today, we never get 100 likes to, uh, a, before seven o'clock. A lot of basketball to get to. There's a, well, there's a lot of basketball. <laughs> huge tonight in the women's tournament. Sure. There's some great matchups tonight yeah. over there. Uh, NC State. Your NC State. People were laughing. People were laughing and laughing at me. This oh, the guy Wolf has it. Uh, I got the Final Four. Don't you have a Purdue NC State match? I got Purdue final? NC State. I got UConn. Oh, you're winning the bracket then. Except you, I had Arizona winning the tournament, and uh, nah, yeah, well, but but still, I think you might still be okay. I'll hang my hat on the NC State pick. You no, have I, to, right? I think you're winning the. I think you're going to win the bracket. Okay, you delivered three in three. the Final Four. I. Pretty sure none of us delivered three in the final four. Plus, you're delivering at least one in the final because you got NC State, Purdue. Did you pick yep. Purdue? Yep. Purdue's going to beat NC State. And UConn will probably. And UConn, Alabama, UConn but. apparently is like the largest betting favorite in a final four ever or in like 15, 20 years or something like sprinkle. that. They, they ship No way. <laughs> There's no way UConn. The, UConn and Purdue are on a collision course. Nothing against NC State. But that team that we saw beat Duke yesterday is not beating Purdue. Purdue, UConn, two number one seeds. Like, nobody even touches UConn. UConn's just yeah. running away I with know. everything. They haven't been tested in, like, years. It's insane. Uh, but Duke yesterday, my God. Things were going good. They're leading at the half. They're playing great defense. And you weren't supposed to necessarily be here either as a, as a Dukey, right? They kind of, like, in a sense. Yeah, like, yesterday's loss sucked. But they still got a little bit further than I thought they right. were going to get. Yeah. So I wasn't like ruining Easter dinner last night because I was just like <laughs> throwing the ham across. Damn the it, room. Filipkowski. How can you cannot not come up big in a game like that? How do you not stop a guy whose name is DJ? And they made it very apparent his name is DJ because they made every single DJ joke a thousand bloody times on the broadcast yesterday. Um, but Duke could not hit a shot to save their lives in the third, in the, in the, in the second half. And then once they couldn't shoot, I think they started panicking. They started blowing it on defense as well. NC State's on a hell of a run. NC State, watch the video last night. NC State had to hit a game-tying buzzer beater in the ACC tournament semifinal just to stay alive in that game. Yeah. And now they're going to the Final Four. Running off fumes. Cinderella. <laughs> Cinderella on the run. I don't know why I like Here's your slip bow to Cinderella. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, Cinderella, thank yeah. you. Get back um, in your pumpkin. But I don't know how they like the Zach Eady. Oh, his profanity laced. Uh, He's tirade. a freak. <laughs> He's seven foot four. You can't defend him, and NC State's going to be rolling in with the the the, the thick guy who's like six nine. Big but there's head. he's not going to be able to do anything against Edie because the guy's he's a giant. He's got he's going to have seven inches on him. I see like on TSN.ca you go it's like battle of the bigs. I'm like there's no battle here. This dude's seven foot four. The other guy is six nine, doesn't jump, has like this little baby hook, decent little mid range game. But Edie's and I I don't even really think Edie's great. Wow. But he's such a bloody giant. It's great when you're when you don't need the ladder to cut down the net. <laughs> like P Purdue's offense is basically from 1994, where they yeah. just put him on the block and post him up, and it's crazy because he had a 40 point game, could very well lead his team to a national tournament, and I think when he gets to the NBA, he's like six points, four rebounds in 14 minutes, guy. General Will on Twitter said, inside Edie's mind, I make ball go in. I am big man. If ball no go in, ref give me foul. Good life. Yeah, pretty that's, much. That's that's the tournament there for uh, for one Zach I don't Edie. know how you're supposed to defend this guy. Yeah. But you can front him. They need to have the help come over the back. But he's just he's just a throwback post-up big man. Like The modern-day big man at least has like a mid-range game. He does, All he does is post people up. Yeah. That just doesn't happen in the NBA anymore. So he's kind of like a, a, a basketball talent that's in the wrong time as far as the NBA goes. College ball, though, obviously he's, uh, he's outstanding. But he's ours. In scoring. He's ours, and he swears he doesn't need no damn ladder to cut the net down. <laughs> Go Boilermakers. He is a bit of a freak. It's, it's neat. It's a neat wrinkle to the tournament as well this, uh, this late on. But condolences for... Uh, yeah. Blue yeah, that was uh, UConn. UConn looks absolutely ridiculous, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. And I do want to get to this. And I'm look. I know you're going to be like, "Oh, Dusty had to mention LeBron 
hitting nine well, of ten threes yesterday. Historic evening. But I'm here for the clip because I think we can have some fun with this clip today. This is a little. This is I, I don't. I, this is probably his ninth three. It might have been his eighth three or his seventh three. Whatever. Just lost track. Of I mean, when, you, when you go ninety percent from beyond the arc, forty points. I mean, forty points in year twenty one. I mean, what are you supposed to do? But uh, there's a good clip in here for us today. LeBron James working with Claxton in front of him. It's going up. LeBron, here it goes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> LeBron. He is the man. All right, that's the is clip. That Cedric Maxwell in the background there. Eh? It, it, it sounds like him. Uh, it's going up. By the way, I saw a Cedric Maxwell note yesterday. A note? It was about, I think, was it Zach Eady comparison? Oh. Like the last, I think it was like the last guy to roll with this many double doubles or something no. in a row. It was Cedric Maxwell. <laughs> First thing I thought was ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Come get your dinner, big fella. It's ready. Yes! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> he is the man! All right, so send us your yes, yes, he is the man text messages to 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. May I, may I begin? Brad okay. Gushu 4-0 and at the Men's World Curling Championships. <laughs> I did not have that, yeah, but well. it works. Brad Gushu 4-0 and at the Men's Worlds. Yes! <laughs> He is the man. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Can I? I wonder if I can clip out that other little LeBron. Let's see. Pittsburgh he Pirates four zero. No, it's to uh, put there together. Four zero. Nice the, start. The Pittsburgh Pirates. Also the Yankees, but I mean the Pirates. Hey, I mean that's Pittsburgh Pirates four zero. Get, get it while it's hot. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> LeBron. He is the man. <laughs> Uh, Cracker Jack says, Edie definitely smokes cigarettes after games. Yeah. Long <laughs> ones. <laughs> That's, uh... Somebody said he has got a family. It looks like he is out there with children. Yeah, VR Montenegro. I like that one, too. Fully grown children. Yeah, yeah, fully. Yeah, yeah his son yeah. is actually the point guard. Yeah, Easter Bunny doesn't visit that house. <laughs> yeah. 780 I like this one. Tommy Gazzola talking about himself when he shows up on time. Yes! Yes! <laughs> he LeBron. is the man! <laughs> Refers to himself as he is the man, pointing at yeah, himself. Yeah. <laughs> My wife, to me, whenever I complete a simple household maintenance task. Yes! <laughs> He LeBron. is the man. Yes. This is good. You're getting it. This is your fuel. This is how you get in for text of the day today. Guys, Jaunty from Victoria with another banger. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he LeBron. is the man. <laughs> By the way, Jaunty did text in earlier today. Yeah. I, he's working on he's a playoff a, pump-up song. <laughs> oh, my God. It's kind of like a playoff warning sent from, from a West, right? Like, it really Jaunty's is. Jaunty's on eh? it. Yeah. Like the Raven comes at the thing. Here, and, he, here uh, he comes. What about uh, what about <clears throat> your children when they find out what the Easter Bunny left at the, uh, hey, uh, get with the clip and the... With the, yeah, with the, the Easter Bunny? He, he, these, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> LeBron. He is the man. Oh, Easter Bunny hunt was good yesterday. I mean, what happened here? I what was are we very proud. Well, I'll, eggs I'll just, still on the eggs still on the run, or no, like no, no. I think they found. I think they found them all. I couldn't find mine forever. Damn Easter Bunny. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I uh, I never seen it before, but they were scrambling around picking up chocolates and eggs and stuff, and uh, they were sharing with each other. Like my sister, my sisters. Yeah. When we used to do yes! our Easter Bunny hunts. It was like a full blown. Somebody usually had black eye when it was all said and done. But Marshall and Elizabeth were like, "I'll have this one, and you can have this one." That's oh look, I found this here. Here, Marshall, you can have it. And Tammy and I, as parents, watching our kids share the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> he LeBron. is the man. Yeah, it was it was good. It was real nice. You also call Easter Bunny LeBron. That's yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, where did LeBron hide the eggs this year? <laughs> Uh, all right, we got a sports update coming up. I says pardon. We're going to get to that. Good, bad, and ugly from the weekend on the way as well. Send us your yes, yes, he is the man text messages to 780-218-9999. This is my way at the end of the day to be like, 
Wow, we had so many LeBron texts today, even though it's not technically a LeBron text at all. 780-218-9999. Sports update. 40 points. Yeah, 40 <laughs> points. Come on, 9 <laughs> which, for which 10. Which more on in the sports update He's, he's got a better three-point per, three percentage than Steph Curry this year. <laughs> and he's not crying either. Unbelievable. Like sports update. Eight games around the NHL this evening, including the Oilers on the road as they visit the Blues. You can join Tom Gazzola alongside YouTube Trev. The will have your oil stream pregame show. Coverage begins 5.30 here on Edmonton Sports Talk, the iHeartRadio app, TuneIn Radio app, and on YouTube. One game yesterday, Dakota Joshua scored twice. Canucks edging the Ducks 3-2. Oilers, six back of the Canucks for tops in the Pacific. Edmonton also have two games in hand. Toronto Blue Jays earning the opening weekend split down in Tampa following a 9-2 win yesterday afternoon. Justin Turner, four RBIs in his first homer as a Blue Jay. Jays are in Houston tonight to kick off a three-game series. First pitch, 6-10. Over to March Madness, where Purdue and North Carolina State are off to the Final Four. The number one Boilermakers defeating two-seed Tennessee, 72-66. While the 11th-ranked Wolfpack got past number four-ranked Duke, 76-64. The Final Four gets underway Saturday with Purdue up against NC State, while fourth-ranked Alabama tangles with number one UConn. On the women's side, Elite Eight action continues later tonight. Number three, LSU will take on number one, Iowa. And number three, UConn faces number one, USC. LeBron James, 40 points, leading the Lakers over the Nets, 116-104. James joining Michael Jordan as the only players in league history with multiple 40-point games after turning 39. James now has two, while Jordan sits on three. Thunder clinching a playoff spot with a 113-112 win over the Knicks, while the Raptors losing streak hitting 13 games yesterday as they lose to the Phillies, or 76ers, 135-120. The Raps will host the Lakers tomorrow. Over to golf, Mackenzie Hughes, the low Canadian. He finished 8-under in a tie for 14th at the Houston Open. German Stefan Jager winning his first PGA Tour event, closing with nine straight pars for a 3-under 67, just avoiding a playoff with Scotty Scheffler. And on TSN this morning, Canada's Brad Gushu looking to improve to 4-0 and at the Men's World Curling Championships, as he's currently taking on Italy Canada with an 8-4 win over defending champion Scotland yesterday. Sports update brought to you by Green Plan, providing you with award-winning environmental planning and consulting services. Whether it's municipal, industrial, or residential, you can plan it right with Green Plan. Visit green-plan.com or give them a call 780-455-4292. I see the oil coming straight towards our end. I go to make my pivot, but I get burned again. I'm stuck out of position, and McDavid's gone. Now I hear those fans are screaming, cause that red light's on. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, you'll never play for a living. You'll only play for fun, but I cracked the squad in T.O. Two years at 1.9. Now I'm hung out on the PK against McDavid's line. Coaches are screaming, keep them to the outside, but they ain't tried containing a cheetah who's just done a couple lines. I'm caught out of position, and McDavid's gone. I just hope I still have my job when we get back home. Oh, I think you got us. I think you got us. It has to be because it's working fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you don't do that. It's it's working. We just checked was, it, but you almost you almost got us. Ha ha ha! Very funny. I that's very stressful. So oh, man, you guys, you had us. We were freaking out for about ninety seconds there while that song was playing. Um. Man. Uh, that's that's guy. That was good. That hilarious. was good. They they got hilarious they got me first. 
Man. Everyone was in on it. Yeah, how did well, how did this come I, I, about? I, I, how did everybody get in on that so quick? We're watch, I'm watching the levels on our screen. We we brought up the audio stream because the levels on YouTube, if if they're working, the audio we'll be able to listen to the audio stream. And I'm, I'm we're listening to the audio stream. I'm like, what the hell? And then we're like, uh, April Fools. That was a Discord joke. Has to be. Damn you, Discord. Has you got to us be. again. That's uh Ben, I'm very I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. How are they all in on it? God, this that's, is uh Well, that's the thing. I saw so many people being like, guys, there's no sound. There's no sound. Both What's on going the text on line and the nasty chat. Well, oh, yeah, Man, you got, my heart stopped for a second because I didn't know how to fix that one. I because we were seeing the audio well, fine. I, I was broke. like, this yeah. isn't working. I was gonna say like this is new. Like I, I don't know. Maddie didn't uh, show me this one because like, everything from what I saw was coming through. So that was very uh, that was very stressful. But you definitely got me. Oh, man, well done, everybody. That's a conch. That was a, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, that was yeah. several con- old conch, old school conch. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I still got shivers for that. Don't do that to us. You don't know how much panic happens around here when the stream goes down. It's a full blown freak out. <sighs> but all right, well, let's well reset. job, well done. I, I, I mean, like. I'll never the forget. Fact this. Everybody was in on it. Was uh, <laughs> I'll never, uh, I'll never forget this. Executed well. That was really well done. I'm, I, uh, overall, I didn't think you had it in you, <laughs> but here you are. That's uh, that's real nice. This is like LeBron James. Yeah, it's like LeBron 40 going points nine over of 10 39 40. years of age, eh? Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Uh, all right, let's get to this text, then we'll get into ISIS part, and then we got good, bad, and ugly for the weekend. This is a good Northside Sandwich, who is working today. A king in the 1700s who has eight daughters and his fourth <laughs> wife finally gives birth to his first male heir. Yes! He is the man. <laughs> that's great. That's really good. Like that's an insanely deep pull. That would be that's the energy. really good. The struggle was real, as we know right? from Game of Thrones. Yeah, I mean, it's you're uh, telling me you have eight daughters. You're on your fourth wife. This would exactly be your reaction. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally got one. That's really good. North Side Sandwich. Strong start. To that text of the day campaign, you got to get creative with it if you're going to win that A and W gift certificate, yeah. man. You who, have to. who or what knocks him off that throne this morning? Hey, I don't know. That's a hell of a text. That's a tough. Uh, that's a tough call. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Like this is good. Like this guy texting. Good morning, gentlemen. There's a couple of obvious choices for your clip. Yeah. Zachary Martin <laughs> Hyman or McDavid taking over the scoring lead. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's good. Uh, but you said, as he said, obvious. But choices, think about I mean, the king from the seventeen hundred text. That's. Like that's that's the level that you got to get to. If you digging. want that gift certificate? A little digging. Have to. All right, Nielsen Show coming at you from the Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen Studio. If you've not yet tried those Popeyes wings, I'll just say it: you're way behind on the times. Everybody's loving the Popeyes wings. See them plastered on the boards when you're watching the Oilers games on TV. You know they're delicious. If it makes it to the board, like a lot of people on the boards will just have their logo, that type of thing. Popeyes is straight up so confident in their wings that they have the wings on the boards. Yeah, and and you know how hard Very it is impressive. to take good pictures of good food. I mean, you go to you go to a yeah. restaurant and they take those homemade pictures of the food. it doesn't always look good. They're putting their product out there. The Oilers are all over it. If the Oilers are putting their product and their food on their boards, what 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 more could you want? What more do you need? What more proof? I just like to see a big flounder sandwich the one there next. That'd be a- wouldn't that be something? That'd be real nice. Dad, I still can't believe they got us with that April Fool's. It, look, it, how look, long have you been putting that together? It you pays nasty to not be on Discord, right? Yeah, this is I guess now you can have these little things with us uh, not knowing. It's it's good stuff. Now play the Justin Turner uh, home run song, if you will. Mm. Don't have one of those. But the Jays at five hundred, I respectful. I'll 500. take it. I, yeah. What I also liked was Kevin Biggio hitting a home run at plus nine hundred on opening day. Cha-ching. Yeah, hit that one. That was good. I had Vladdy and I had BGO, and they both hit bombs. So that was uh, very, very and, nice. And how about Ernie Clement? Uh, the play that and guy, the stretch That guy's a baller. Vladdy's very flexible for normal-sized dude. Like he's uh, He makes some nice plays over there. The IKF, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it was a good weekend for the Jays, I'd say. Gleason. 
in the inbox. I get home from work and I see a Victoria's secret bag sitting on the kitchen table. Yes! Yes! <laughs> he the is the man! This guy must really like the way that stuff fits. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a, okay. <laughs> like I... <laughs> Seven eight zero two one eight. Female here. Seven eight zero two one eight. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. All right. Let's get into. <laughs> I says pardons for Lawyer Central. Lawyer Central dot com slash pardons. But they don't just do pardons. They do everything that you need, no matter how bad a person you are, or a good person who got caught in a evil scheme, a bind. Or if you <laughs> yeah, have a yeah. criminal record because you had a small ounce of weed on you in the late eighties. They can get that taken care of. Clean slate, affordable rate. Did you see a small ounce? A yeah. small ounce. Yeah. As opposed to those big the ounces. Big, yes. Yeah. Look, man, I'm not good with that. I don't know no, the, I, I I don't think, know the weed uh, measurements. But an ounce, seven ounce can go either way. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> anyway, if you did something stupid and you're still paying for it, you don't have to. Triple W, lawyer-central.com slash pardons or call one 888 8177 Find out more about getting a pardon and any other legal issues they got. They got lawyers all across the country. Uh, lawyer-central.com. Did you see this shot? I didn't want to play the video just in case, like, NBA <laughs> kills us on uh, on uh, YouTube. But uh, did you see Luka Doncic and this 22-foot finger roll? You got to go watch this play. If you haven't seen it yet, go on YouTube. Go on, uh, go on Twitter right now. Just type in Luka Doncic. It'll be the first thing that pops up. Feather touch. So uh, this guy, Doncic is such... Like, there's nothing physically brilliant no, about Luka Doncic. The, the shirt under the uniform. I love him. The, the pickup gym type of style. I mean, God. YouTube Trev might see him at, uh, at, at his uh, intramurals, you know, during the week when yes. he goes and plays dodgeball. Doncic could be there. And I wouldn't blink an eye. I love guys who roll T-shirt under the jersey. In the pro game. God, in the pro <laughs> game? The pro game. Like, me doing that in high school was one thing. But for these guys to still roll that out in the pro game. Or the big man on uh, NC State, right? <laughs> he wears the red T-shirt underneath. And the reason we do it is so you don't see our little side boob. Like, sure. that's, that's what happens. Um, but for Doncic to roll it. So, you got to go watch this Doncic play. Because he's out at the three-point line. They're pressuring him. They're playing pretty good defense. And he kind of does a fake and then sort of one steps behind the defender and straight up finger rolls it from 21 feet out, like an under, underhand scoop shot, and nails it. You're watching. You're like, that, like, I've never seen that shot in the history of the association. I don't think every, anybody's ever pulled off the underhanded scoop, finger rollish shot from, I don't think anybody's even tried it. But he goes and nails it. And it just looks that, that much better coming from a physical specimen yeah. like Luka Doncic. Like the headline. Making it looks so easy. Whereas he could probably do my taxes after the game. If, if, like the I, headline on TSN should have said, average dude hits ridiculous shot. <laughs> Again. I really hope. he'll hit another ridiculous oh, one man. sometime down the. I hope Doncic gets a title at some point, man. I love this guy. Like when LeBron eventually retires in eight to ten years, Luka's my guy. Luca becomes the guy. He's insanely smart. His vision's incredible. Uh, he's I love him. And to see that shot go in the way it did, how can you not watch? Go watch the video right now. I guarantee what you see. You'd be like, I says, pardon? How'd that happen? Seven straight wins for the Dallas Mavericks. They're rolling. Nine and one in their last 10, fifth in the West. They got themselves out of the play-in and into the actual yeah. conversation. They are absolutely rolling. And it's just a ridiculous shot. Absolutely ridiculous shot. Go can check he, it out. Can he do it in Dallas though, or will he have to go somewhere else? Well, it's one of those things. Like it's not. I it's know. not a Dame Lillard Portland thing by any stretch, but it's kind of. Eh. No, but they've like they've never really had a sniff. No, right? He's been there for a long time. Like the Nowitzki years, right? They like, tried to bring some pieces in around him. I don't think I would put them on a long playoff run this year. But I, you with never a guy know. Like him, you never know. In the NBA with. Uh, but yeah, does he have to go somewhere else and join up with somebody? Yeah, that's usually what happens in the NBA, or, or one of those so, franchises with a lot of history to them that that guys go, goes later there in their career usually like to go to. Yeah, and still deliver titles and not waste your final years and embarrass yourself <laughs> like with I the Wizards. Just, I could see him, anyways. Yeah, 
<laughs> we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening there for a future but, uh, show. Yeah. My God. Go watch the play. It's ridiculous. Can't hate the guy. I says pardon. No, like it's I mean, just nothing is, and he's like the everyday man. <laughs> yeah, he he is. Play the clip for him for crying out loud. Great, uh, yeah, like <laughs> me anytime I see Luca Doncic do anything. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> he LeBron. is the man. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. We got our good, bad, and ugly from the weekend we're going to get into. Let me just reset the uh, second half of the show here. Mike Johnson's going to join us. Uh, Dregs will pop in later in the week. MJ's going to slide in today. We'll get his thoughts on the Oilers, the wings over the wins over the Kings and the Ducks. Is this team starting to look playoff ready? We'll ask that generic question coming up just after uh, <laughs> 7 o'clock today. Race for the Art Ross is heating up. McDavid wants it, but McKinnon might not let him take it. I think he just switched again. Back and forth, back and <laughs> forth, back and forth. Uh, Austin Matthews hit 60. How much of a failure is it going to be if he doesn't get to 70? Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, cool bet hotline of the day coming up. Keyword for Vegas around 735 today. Uh, mm, that's good. On the way around 745. Kind of easy trivia. Three questions. Ryan Rashog, Orange and Blue Breakfast, all to uh, to get you set there as well. And, hey, if you are uh, if you're looking for a delicious beverage, what probably happened over the weekend was you drank your house out of beverages. So it's time to hit up some of that sweet, sweet Alley Cat product. Stock them up. Including the 6 o'clock or lager. My parents are using 6 o'clock or lager to trade for things now. Like, they're bartering with it. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, they stored, uh, they stored, they got, like, one of those three-wheeler spider motorbikes. And they yeah. stored it at my uh, my cousin's place, my uncle, my cousin. For a couple flats. Well, yeah. And they said, we went and picked up the motorbike. I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. How did that go? This is good. We gave your Uncle Wes uh, eight six o'clock or loggers. I like that. I, I did. Like, I didn't know that my parents had enough six o'clock or logger in BC that they're they're now negotiating with it. HR daddy's just sitting on a pallet, hey? Well, that, you know what? It, <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. But whether it's the 6 o'clock or lager, the apricot, or many of the other delicious, delicious beverages available with Alley Cat, uh, go, go well, pick up some more Alley Cat for the, uh, for the upcoming week. You're going to eat them. Some big Oilers games. Here. Well, and this week we said heavy hockey this week for the Oilers, uh, but 10 degrees today under the sun, 19 tomorrow. You might want to take the 6 o'clock or lager out for its first spring test run, shall we say. Maybe a little bit of yard work, right? With those higher temps. Oh, that's real nice. And seeing how it kind of uh, That's a real nice idea. Yeah. The Mangalorean, the apricot, the six o'clocker lager. I mean, some staples in the Nielsen household fridge. My wife found a six o'clocker lager in the back of the fridge yesterday. She's like, oh, we have one. I was just like, I, yeah, this is great. It's like a Jurassic Park terrible. when they find that, uh, the, the amber mosquito. Yeah. <laughs> well, we bring in six o'clocker lagers here. A can from Alley Cat, they'll drop off a flat. Yeah. They're gone. Good I never luck. see them. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what happened to the 24 that were dropped off like 10 days ago, but Gager. they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. Yeah, it was probably Gager. <laughs> anyway, great partnership with Alley Cat. You can just swing by Alley Cat itself and pick a bunch of it up or hit up any of your uh, local liquor stores. And uh, Alley Cat has you covered. Six o'clock or lager available at the uh, Sobeys and Safeway liquor locations. X-Ray Jason says, stocked up yesterday. My Good man. man. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Very smart move. That post-Easter 6 o'clock or lager stock up with a sprinkling of apricot or any of their other delicious flavors. And we're not that far away from hitting up a Riverhawks game and grabbing oh, some of that sweet, sweet you, alley cat beverage, is, too. This is week one of, of many here, but uh, see how they go down this week. And as you said, quite, I mean, post-Easter, stock up. Fill, fill the cupboards in the pantry and the fridge again. All right, good, bad, and ugly from the weekend. Uh, Lieutenant Eric, where are you going? Where are you starting with? What's your good? I have to uh, go with my bracket, yes. specifically the North Carolina state side. What was it, the uh, the south or the uh, whatever region uh, that it was? But no, I, I got Purdue, I got UConn, and I got the Wolfpack. They're all going to the Final Four. Now, I did have Arizona Wildcats winning the tournament, to which they got bounced. But uh, I guess I'll take it. As you said, I, I might be the best one. In, not not that I'm doing any sort of, you know. Is your bracket here? Do you have it? No, in? I got it at you home. You got to bring it back in. I will, yeah. We got to yeah. add it up. And, uh, I will tomorrow, but uh, yeah. yeah I, I'm, look, I'm pleasantly surprised. I have no money on the line, and that's fine by me, but. Uh, we have no money on the line, but if you have the best bracket, you're winning 50 bucks. But there's no money. Yeah, but we we're, we like that's Edmonton the Sports Talks giving it's, away fifty bucks to the staff member that has the best bracket, courtesy of the company. Yeah, I'm getting fifty. For, you know, is this if tax? you if you win it, it's Do just fifty dollars under the table. 
I'll have to go like this. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now I'm yeah. Now with that being said, with your bracket being at home, can we trust that you didn't mess around with it? Uh, all all other pen, brackets have all been sitting pen, right here. Uh, you can scratch. There'll be no uh, whiteout or uh, invisible ink. Fair enough. No pencil. So no, I look. I I don't like to brag, but that's uh yeah. People were laughing at the North Carolina State. I I don't remember the names, but I I can still hear the laughter. It was pretty wild, though, that you had an 11 seat going to the Final Four. But yeah, absolutely always, nailed There's it. always one, right? There's yeah. always something like that in the tournament. Well, I ended up getting it done. Uh, here's my good from the weekend, and this is because I'm a major fantasy sports degen, but I've started drafting for next fantasy football season. <laughs> I've got two slow drafts on the go right now. Slow drafts. Yeah, so it's it's just uh, like you have six hours to make your picks. And you got to talk real yeah. slow. Uh, I like to take Jared Goff. Anyway, I'm slow drafting two leagues right now, which is great. I've got a super flex, uh, best ball slim is what it's called. So it's best ball, so you don't have to set your lineup throughout the year. It just always takes your best players, and hey, that's your that's top nice. score. It's nice. So I, I got best ball slim, which means no kickers, no defense. Sounds like a hell of a guy, too. Yeah, be, like, yeah best my, ball slim. My old buddy, best ball slim down the road there. He's a- you want to have a good time this weekend? <laughs> Why don't you give best ball slim a call? Anyway, I got best ball slim super flex. And then I got a best ball slim non superflex draft going right now. Ended up picking five or s- five and six in both of the drafts. Not ideal, but uh, having a lot of fun with it. It's good to be drafting again. That's my good from the weekend. I'm drafting again for the upcoming fantasy football season. It's just nice to get reps in. That's it's what ni- it is. It's, yeah, it's you just did, nice yeah. to get reps in so that doing the act. By the time we get to actual draft season, I can tell you like every single player's. Average draft position, or as we call in the biz, ADP. Mm-hmm. I can tell you where all their ADP are, like with my eyes closed. So that's why I like to get the reps in. What do they say? Do something 10,000 times, you'd be great at it, or for 10,000 exactly. hours. And uh, that's why I do as many drafts as possible for the next five months. <laughs> uh, what's your bad from the weekend? Uh, my bad, I'm dishing it out to the following. The Chicago White Sox, the Houston Astros, the New York Mets, the Miami Marlins, the, uh, and that's it. All teams uh, going over the weekend winless in uh, opening weekend in Major League Baseball. It's tough because Major League Baseball's got a quite long schedule. Um, sometimes you're out of it by, what, week two, week three, right? But the opening weekend, you like to think, that, yeah, we're all in the World Series chat conversation. And, and you still are. I mean, the Jays 2-2, two and two, the Rays 2-2. Two and two, you're, But to, to come out of this weekend with no wins, um, <laughs> you know, you're already... <laughs> Uh, that eight, you're already start. behind that eight ball, and, the, and I mean, if that happens with the Jays, I'm coming in today insanely angry. It's it's very very tough. Um, and for the Mets, I mean, this is kind of the same refrain. Marlins, I'm not excited. maybe the Astros might have more in their in their tool shed this season. I know Norman Combine could probably uh, extrapolate on that, but the Yankees four and zero sweeping them down. Um, so yeah, tough tough to kind of get under this weekend without a win in your uh, opening weekend series. So my bad will go to those franchises that I mentioned. Uh, my bad is that I had a ticket for the Con Air show on Friday night. Remember they were doing it at the theater, Con Air, yes. live at the, the Garneau Theater there. the Metro ticket Center. to go. No, I fell asleep. Ugh. Not at the movie, before the movie. Like, I, the movie didn't start till 9.30. Friday. This is Friday. Friday. And I was watching the Duke game Friday night, and I was just like, out, woke up, like 9 o'clock. I'm not going to run to a movie at 9.30 when it's 9 o'clock already. So I guess my bad is that I've now got to the point where if something's happening after like 8.30 p.m., I'm not going out. Like, that just doesn't happen. It is. I was talking with Tam. I got. I was just like, oh, man, 9 o'clock. I guess you should go to this movie. And she goes, well, you're, out, you're up in time. You could go. And I was like, ah. Like, I, I don't – even when I go out, it's like for like an EST watch party – you're out at about six. You're kind yeah. of starting to. I can't go out of the house after eight thirty p.m. Like, are you nuts? I went bowling Friday night at seven thirty. You thought didn't I, start I until seven thirty. Yeah, yeah. We, we're going bowling. Sweet. What time this afternoon? Seven thirty tonight. Ugh. After supper? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Doing almost <laughs> anything after done. supper is ridiculous. Yeah, no, you're done. Now. You're you're totally done. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, <laughs> I think Tam looked at me like I was kind of a loser. Well, but, but I didn't care. I was just like, I'm I'm begged. You're a man. Right, you're, you're, you're want to go to the movie? 40. I'll go to the movie. I, I, yeah. If I don't, I, I don't. Yeah, Spency Five Cents. Welcome to Old Man Dusty segment here. Uh, well, here again, old man. I mean, I guess I gotta. I still gotta find that youthful exuberance somewhere Look, along the way. On, on a weekend night, not a not a not a Friday of an Easter long weekend, but a regular weekend. A Cook County beckons. You're you're 
come on, you're howling at the moon. You're time, not, time not if I'm not leaving backseat. my house till nine if o'clock. You're not leaving the house. Oh, no. but I think we, you could get dra- for for a certain <laughs> circumstance or action. You could get. I I don't know if I'll leave the house after nine o'clock again in my life. <clears throat> Let's run a test on this. The sun's not even the sun. When, once the sun gets higher in the sky and stays there, right? Like by, it's still kind I just, of light. I'm, out, I'm old. I'm old guy now. It's just that's so how it, it works. So. All right, what's your ugly from the weekend? Uh, the LA Kings. It's an ugly weekend. Ugly weekend for the Los Angeles Kings. Well, you go into that game Thursday night with the Oilers. Yeah, a big one. To which the last time we were all in a room together doing the show, and you're like, oh, well, Kings, this is a huge game for both teams. And the They've Kings, you know, a couple, well, couple points stuff. behind, yeah, yeah. playing well. They knocked off the Canucks earlier in the week. 4-1. Then they go into Calgary, lose 4-2 to the Flames. And this morning, they are five points up on the Blues with a game in hand for that final wildcard spot. So, an Easter weekend to forget for your Los Angeles Kings. That is, uh, that is that's kind of ugly. That's ugly, right? Like, that's yeah. pretty ugly. It's, that is uh, that's a little ugly. See, Penner's Pancake says, that's me too, Dusty. You don't have to. Why, why go out after 9 p.m.? Well, it's got, if you want to get me out of the house, while. get me out of the house around six thirty. I'll stay out all night. But if you think I'm like getting ready, putting on decent clothes, and leaving the house after nine p.m., you're nuts. Lakers tip off eight forty-five, whatever. But you're you're at home. You're no, right? at home. I'll do that. I'll stay up late. You stay staying it's up. Just, uh, it's just I'm not leaving the house at nine o'clock. I said to town. I said it's it's pretty much dark out. You expect me to go out when it's dark out? See, but once it stays, you're talking June's and July's. You'll be. Just still not leaving the house after really? nine o'clock. No. Put on a pair of sandals and some basketball shorts. No. That's it. That's it's not. It uh, it's not happening. Uh, my ugly from the weekend is, uh, and we'll get into it a little bit just after seven thirty. Um, still, years removed. Anytime you throw out a tweet about the local football team, there's still people complaining about the name in there. We're going to get to it around 7.30 no, no. Uh, with some of the, uh, no, no. I think there's 20 NDAs that were signed. Guys have interest in the Edmonton Elks. Um, and there's different levels of varying degrees of interest. We'll get into that a little bit just after 7.30 today. But you put it out, and I was just like, man, 20, 20 people interested in, in taking over the Elks to very, very varying levels. And, like, the first reply was like, well, I bet you uh, if I could buy it, I'd switch the name back. And I was just like, man, people still... And then, so I then I threw a tweet out being like... Because many people be like, if they change their name back, I'll buy my season tickets again. Even though they've had back-to-back seasons with four wins, you don't really want to watch a team lose football games. Um, so I threw out yesterday, I was like, I wonder if like this is actually a thing. And, or if it's just a bunch of empty promises from people who just hated the name change. Well, they're not going to come back. And the reaction was... Uh, anyway, we'll get to it coming up, but it was my ugly from the weekend. A hot so take, but the, the name's always been the same. It's always been Edmonton, so I don't know why it's so tough to to support an Edmonton-based football team. Well, for some people I, it I, is. I guess so. It's... Yeah, well, we'll have this discussion a little bit around 7.30. Look at some of that Twitter reaction. Uh, let's get to a sports update with Lieutenant Eric for Century Casino, Sports Bar and Lounge, one of our favorite places. Mike Johnson on the other side. Oilers get the Blues tonight coming off of the... Uh, Victory over the weekend against the Ducks. That nice win against the Kings. We'll get into all of it. The Art Ross race is heating up right now. Matthews hit 60. There's lots to get to there. But a sports update with Lieutenant Eric right now. Oilers on the road tonight. They'll visit the Blues in one of eight games around the NHL. You can join Tom Gasol and YouTube Trev for the Oil Stream pregame show. Coverage begins at 5.30 here on Edmonton Sports Talk, the iHeartRadio app, TuneIn Radio app, and on YouTube, just one game yesterday as the Canucks got past the Ducks 3-2. Oilers are six back of the Canucks for tops in the Pacific this morning. Edmonton also have two games in hand. The Jays earning the opening weekend split down in Tampa as they defeated the Rays 9-2 yesterday afternoon. Justin Turner, four RBIs in his first homer as a Blue Jay. Jays road trip will continue there in Houston tonight to kick off a three-game series with the Astros. First pitch 6-10. Over to March Madness, Purdue and North Carolina State are off to the Final Four. Boilermakers defeating Tennessee 72-66, while the Wolfpack got past Duke 76-64. Final four gets underway Saturday. Purdue goes up against NC State, while Alabama tangles with UConn. On the women's side, Elite Eight action continues later tonight. Number three, LSU battle number one, Iowa. Well, number three, UConn take on number one, USC. LeBron James had 40 points, leading the Lakers over the Nets, 116-104. OKC clinching a playoff spot with a 113-112 win over the Knicks. While the Raptors' losing streak hit 13 games with a 135-120 loss to Philly. 
The Raps will host the Lakers tomorrow night. Over to golf for Mackenzie Hughes was the low Canadian. He finished 8 under in a tie for 14th at the Houston Open. German Stefan Jager winning his first PGA Tour event as he closed with nine straight pars for a 3 under 67. Canada's Brad Gushu looking to improve to 4 and 0 at the Men's World Curling Championships this morning. He's currently in action against Italy down 2 1 in the fourth end. Sports update brought to you by the Centro Casino Sports Bar and Lounge at Centro Casino 4 Road. Your home for the final week of March Madness as the final four gets set to battle for national championship. Catch all the action at the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge. The Nielsen Show featuring Lieutenant Eric. Only on Edmonton Sports Talk. in the morning. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, I got a shout out to Atif. Shout out to Wheels, who's the only guy in the Nazi chat being like, hey, the, uh, the feed's down. Can't hear you. Classic. Uh, 30 minutes late, Wheels. Yeah, Atif, uh, the April Fool's joke that the listeners pulled on us was half hour ago. Yeah. Came in a little, you can't came tell me that's not by design either, though. Atif yeah, yeah, coming in yeah, like, yeah. Anyway, that's Atif, the best, best joke of them all. Atif, we love you, buddy. <laughs> but you're 30 minutes late on the joke, which is okay. I mean, that's all right. You can't be up to speed on everything. It's classic. Uh, we got our keyword for the EST Flyway to Vegas with our partners down at the airport, Fly YEG. That's coming up around 7.30 this morning. Mm, that's good for Italian Center Shop on the way around 7.45. Cool bet hotline of the day. We'll also have an EST parlay set up over at Cool Bet today, obviously, with our, uh, uh, our usual EST parlays, Oilers in action. We usually put something together, and they are in action tonight against the St. Louis Blues. Our hockey insiders all week long are brought to you by our great partners over at Pro-Am Sports. If you haven't checked them out yet, proamsports.ca. They got a couple of deadlines this week for some of the private signings that they've got set up. Vincent DeHarnay will be signing the deadline to get your items in for Vinny is uh, Wednesday, April 3rd, and then Ryan Smith with a private signing over at Pro-Am as well. The deadline on that bad boy is this Saturday, April 6th. So we've got uh, we've got that going for us as well. If you missed it this morning, YouTube Trev, our producer, texted me around uh, 525 today and said, hey, I don't think I can make it in today. And he got me. And that's, uh, that's a funny April Fool's joke. And uh, it's nice to still be got sometimes. We don't really do it on the show, got. but we got got. And it feels nice sometimes. All right, let's bring in uh, let's bring in Mike Johnson, uh, who we don't even need to come on today. And Drager's here. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha. April Fools. Just kidding, MJ. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> yeah, good one. Good one. <laughs> Although I always enjoy today is April Fools. Today is also my parents' anniversary, which I thought might have been the ultimate April Fools when you show up at your parent you a wedding like psych April Fools. But no, I always so I don't think it's April Fools. Parents' anniversary. Parents hilarious because that would that would be a funny thing to do. I feel like you would genuinely have to be a funny person to kind of pull that off. Yeah, I don't think my parents are that funny. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Yeah. I, I don't think they have it in them to be that kind of humor. No, uh, but uh, it fools. Yeah, good one. At five thirty in the morning, though, guys, like you're pretty vulnerable to any kind. I know. Of you're yeah. not really thinking clearly. Like you're, you know, you're gonna take everything at face value. That's the time to get you, I guess. It was because I instantly was like, damn it. Why didn't he text me last night if he wasn't feeling well? Now I got to call a couple of people and wake him up and try to get him in. And could we get through the first hour of the show without him? Maybe. But then what's going to happen when MJ signs in and we have to connect him? So, yeah, it got me really good. And uh, now he's going to be fired after the show today. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the next step. Joke's on him in the end. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, they're in action tonight against the St. Louis Blues. Coming off uh, a win over the Ducks. Uh, but that big win on Thursday, we haven't even been on the air since Thursday because we're off Friday. Yep. Big win over the Los Angeles Kings. Had that win against the Jets last week after a weird weekend in Ontario. And uh, I guess, I mean, we always talk about peaking at the right time, peaking at the right time. How much is there to that? Like, should we just give the Nashville Predators the Stanley Cup? Or are there different levels to being playoff ready? 
Well, you can also apply peak too early. And I wonder if Nashville maybe went yeah. on their great run and now they're going to be like, you know, go back to sort of a slightly better than the 500 team down the stretch. But I think more so than the results, you want to feel like your game both individually and collectively is a good place to start the playoffs. I mean, you know, you'd like to see your goaltenders play well, give you lots of confidence, have them feeling like they have a lot of confidence. You'd like your systems play, especially your penalty kill, to feel like it's not getting shredded on the way in, that they're pretty locked in and pretty tight. Um, you know, your best players would like to be scoring goals and producing points, which in Edmonton is sort of always the case. That's the kind of stuff. Whether you win, you know, seven out of eight games going in or four out of eight, if you feel like those elements are in place, then you feel good about heading to the playoffs. So, uh, And then, of course, the other one is good health, right? Like if you can get something near healthy when the playoffs start to be in good I think Edmonton's in a really good spot. I mean, the, the games they played both on Thursday, L.A. and this weekend, you know, you, you're supposed to beat Anaheim, but you do beat Anaheim, right? Like, there's also something to be said about that. Like, it wasn't a tough game. It wasn't all, you know, one where the, the, the bottom feeders kind of jump up and make it really difficult. It was like they ran away with it. McDavid had his points. It was a comfortable win, and, and they move along. Like, I think that's also a sign of maturity and growth. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's different stuff you want to accomplish more so than necessarily like, peaking as far as going on a big winning streak prior to the playoffs. Well, and Mike, I just wanted your thoughts as, like, if you are running the good ship Edmonton Oilers right now and you got these 10 games for April and it's going to be a crunch starting tonight in St. Louis, you got four games here in the next six days, some good opposition. You find yourself now those six back of the Canucks for top in the Pacific, two games in hand. Of course, the April 13th game will go a long way, but... And you talk about peaking early and everything. I mean, it's very tantalizing to go catch the Canucks right now, uh, depending on who you want to play in that opening round. I don't think anybody, I mean, the, I know they beat the Kings Thursday, but Vegas will be, they're all going to be hard outs. They're all going to be tough games. So if you're running the Oilers right now, I mean, you're, obviously that Pacific is still in sights, but you've you've spoke to the health of this team. Do you, do you maybe look five games out and kind of dial it back a bit, or do you just let these guys run and say to hell with peaking? We're going after the tops of the division and to hell with whoever we get in the first round. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, what, if you come second, you're going to get maybe Vegas, maybe could, L.A. Or you could come be L.A. First, or, get, yeah. or maybe Vegas, maybe L.A. Like, pick maybe your poison. Yeah. Like, I don't think the, the matchup, and the matchup is still up in the air. You can't say, well, let's chase first so we get a terrible team. Like, if I played in the East... I would be chasing first because I want to play against Washington or Philadelphia or Detroit. Like that is much easier than the alternative. That doesn't exist in the West. So I think you'd probably go, the first thing I would do if I'm running the Oilers, I go down there, like, what is our early rotation going to be? It feels like Stuart Skinner is going to be the guy. So he's not going to play more than six of the last 10 games, given how condensed they are. So Pickard better be ready to play for like, that's the first building block of what I'm trying to do down the stretch maybe I leave myself a little flexibility if we are within two of Vancouver with three to play and we got that game late against them, you know, we make an adjustment there. But generally speaking, I'd probably work on the goaltending rotation first. And then I would probably, you know, we just keep playing along. If anybody has a sort of nagging, my hip is sore, my groin is sore, I got a shoulder that's a little bit, like then you start thinking, okay, a week from now, do we need to take a couple of days off for those guys? So those guys need to miss a game worry about the health factor more so than you worry about trying to track down Vancouver. Um, but the bottom line is I would just, you know, keep playing the way you play. There's a reason why Evan has Brown on Vancouver, right? They're just doing what they're doing is enough. So keep that while also keeping in mind the big picture, which is whatever April 20th or whenever the playoffs may end up starting. That's when uh, you're really focused, not necessarily grabbing first because first in the West doesn't benefit you like it usually might other than my, that would be nice. Uh, but I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not going to risk someone's health to try to grab that when you might not be able to get there anyways. How important do you think it is for the Oilers to have their lines kind of locked in prior to the playoffs? Knobloch had been mixing things up quite often. It was going back to McDavid and Drysdale a lot mid game there for, uh, for a, probably a three, four week stretch. Last three games, they've sort of locked in a top nine and have left it alone but this is a team who usually operates, you know, by moving guys around on a regular basis and still finding a way to have success. So how important is stability, I guess, for you heading into the playoffs, Mike? 
So, I mean, I think you said it. When you're a team that's used to being a little bit fluid with your lines, where it's not locked in people all the time. And there's also the reality that McDavid and Drysaddle can play so much that, like, I don't know if there's another player on the team that can kind of play every five-on-five five minute with those guys, right? Like, they run out of gas by the time they get to 21, 22, five-on-five five minutes. So you need to be able to do different things. But as a, you know, if you're a player on the third line or, you know, if you're, you're trying to find – something that you would feel really comfortable with a lot of you generally want to feel good about playing know that that's what the case is going to be so yeah i think you want to establish what your rotation will look like what the lines will look like while everyone understands it's not going well like they always have the others will try something different but i think yeah like you don't want to be completely experimenting switching game by game by game um you'd like a little continuity heading down the stretch because Again, ideally, when you get to the playoffs, that continuity should matter a little bit where guys are comfortable. If there's some chemistry developed, they know the roles. Like, you know, like if you're on the third line and you get some checking assignments, like you sort of know, okay, when we go to LA and Kopitar's out there, like you're not jumping, but you're getting ready to go because you know, like this is how we, this is how our, our rotations work on the bench. And um, that's all part of what they're going to try to achieve down the stretch. So, yeah, getting some continuity is not, never a bad thing. Race for the Art Ross is heating up. It's like whoever's played most recently is at the top we of the We know the podium. Right? Like yeah, McDavid just... took it over for a little bit. Then McKinnon stormed back in there. Kucherov's lurking around as well. I I still, I mean, McDavid, since the team got going, has been at like two points per game after a really slow start. I still think, I still think he ends up winning it. But is that a homer take here in Edmonton, Mike? Like McKinnon, I feel, is sort of a man on a mission right now as well. Uh, no, that's not a homer take. I think by points per game, McDavid is first. And if they maintain their points per game, and with the two extra games McDavid has on McKinnon and the one extra one on Kucherov, he would finish first. So not a homer take at all. What's crazy, though, is like the fact that, what, Connor popped in there for like 30 minutes. He had the scoring lead yeah. briefly on Saturday night, and then he was passed later. Like, it's just the time-lapse grasp of the, the point accumulation would be fascinating to watch. You know, Connor was 20 points back at one point. Now he's one and two points back. So he clearly is heading the right direction. He hasn't played many games. His points per game is higher. Um, he's been there before. He'll tell you he doesn't want it. They all will tell you they don't want it. They all are full of <laughs> not the truth. Because the reason why these players, any player, is as good as they are is that they are hyper competitive. And yes, I understand Connor 1,000% priority is winning a Stanley Cup. I get that. But don't act like, you know, that it doesn't matter to win the scoring race. It doesn't matter to win a heart trophy. Of course it matters. Like, that's what some of the things that help drive you. So um, I do think that Connor McDavid is the favorite to win it. What's going to be great is that whoever wins it will have had to play great to win it. Yeah. Right? There's no backing into this award. There's no Jamie Ben 87 points. Here's your Art Ross. Like, it's like, I saw the last 11 games, and McKinnon both had 22 points. So two per, Yeah. but McDavid had 25. <laughs> like, more than two per. And like, this is the kind of stuff they're doing down the stretch. It's amazing. And I can't remember now. You probably will correct me because it, it probably has happened more recently. But, like, I don't remember a lot of Art Ross races that have felt close and sort of multiple players involved going back and forth down the stretch. There was that one, I think it was Ben and Tavares, and the tie you know, way back in the day where Ben scored late to tie him in the last game. But um, I think it's exciting for the fans. And I love to see the players go head to head. And I am with you. I am not a homer either. I am a mathematician. And the math <laughs> tells me McDavid is, should be the favorite. Not a guarantee, but he should be the favorite to win it. MJ, thanks for sliding in today, man. Appreciate it. All right, boys. Happy April Fool's Day. Yeah, I yeah. won't invoice for you this month. Ah, he said an April Fool's. That's an April Fool's for sure. That's uh, that's a good one. He's probably going to do overtime because for some people, they're not working today. Uh, maybe that's the case. Eh? Unbelievable. I do like his pick from him. He is a mystic as well, so that yeah. shouldn't be forgotten. Man, I, I hope it hits because I got McDavid at 25-1 to 1 to win the Art Ross when he was like 20 points back. It's a big ticket. It's a big ticket. And, I mean, that's going to be the biggest cash in lock shop history. Ah, uh, we've hit some golf winners, I guess, who've been lower down the twenty-five to one. But I remember making the case for it that day when I was like, "Look, look, look at this!" And I think he was about seventeen, eighteen points back at the time. 
and he had like six games in hand. And I said six games in hand. <laughs> And that alone is going to be 12 to 14 points. It's almost too much. All he needs to do is kind of keep at this current pace, and a bunch of us hammered it over at Cool Bet. Cool Bet might have to shut down if McDavid wins the Art Ross because we're taking him for a pretty, pretty, pretty penny. And I think it's very likely that uh, that it happens. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like as, 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 as non-important as the Art Ross is, it's still going to be really fun to see which one of these guys bangs it out at the end. Because they're all just on fire right now. Well, and you know, it's like, no offense to Artemi Panarin, but you know how the podium is going to shake out. You just don't know who's going to be holding which seat. But to think it's not going to go down to the final minute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Uh, no, I, th- I think McDavid secures this before his final game. Before the final yeah, game. Yeah, like, I, think McD- I think McDavid wins this Art Ross by five to six points when it's all said and done. It's maybe gonna, that maybe that's the homer take. I don't know, Chad. What do you think? It's going to be interesting to see, like as well, whoever wins the Art Ross is that what solidifies the Hart Trophy? Because that's you know Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, and Kucherov, they're all right there, right? So it's crazy. But in the last ten games, like MJ had said, there twenty five points, which is just insane. And if he matches that, which is kind of, and I just read the stat, if he matches that. He reaches 1,000 points, points in the year, which yeah. is just crazy that, you know, we're having that conversation because he has been uh, chipping along at two points per game since yeah. uh, the 16-game the mark of the season. So it's crazy. I'm thinking that he's probably going to do it. I, I really do. Like, he, his best hockey is always on, you know, the last few weeks, the last month, and he hasn't slowed down. So it, it's crazy. I, I, even if McDavid wins the Art Ross, I still don't think he'll win the Hart. I think... And you have to view this from who's voting for it. And those who be voting for it would be the Professional Hockey Writers Association. Yeah. And McKinnon hasn't won a Hart Trophy. I think this would be the year where they, they give him the Hart. And it'd be, it'd be justified. Like, it would be justified. I think you can make a case for any of these guys. But McDavid's going to roll in if he leads the league in scoring and finishes with over 100 assists, which he told he's going to hit 100 assists this week. Um, certainly make a case for it. I just have a deep down sneaking suspicion that no matter what, it's probably going to Nathan McKinnon. That's fair. Yeah, well, yeah that's fair. I honestly think if if McDavid wins the Art Ross, they love their headlines, right? Like last year, McDavid getting 150 points hasn't been done in almost 30 years. And then before that, Matthews with the 60 goals hasn't been done in almost 10 years, right? But then, you know, if McDavid gets the 100 assists, which he's probably going oh, yeah, to, that's, that's definitely one thing that they're going to look at. But also, McKinnon has that headline, the second longest home scoring streak ever, right? The only one to have a better home scoring streak was yeah. Wayne Gretzky. So that's a huge headline. They're definitely going to look at both of those. That would be a big part of it, too. So, yeah. There, I mean, you can make legitimate cases for for both of those, both of those guys. Uh, but we'll see how it plays out between now and the end of the season. One of the things that MJ did say in there is what you really want heading into the playoffs is a healthy team, and the Oilers have been insanely healthy for most of the year. And uh, the last thing you want is trying well, to push a little extra down the stretch when you're not going to catch first, or you're not going to, or you're like comfortably ahead of. And they're not in either spot right now. They can still definitely catch the Canucks. Well, and, as he points out, though, know, too, like, who, who cares around. in the end? Like, is that big yeah. of a deal? Like, I know you get the banner in for the fans, and, and it'd be kind of funny to do the start that you had to the year to, to catch and win the division. But well, it's been end, so long since the others won a division, it would kind of be cool. But, but with, with the health you mentioned, like, how, how much do you push here, and how much do you need to push? It's not like they're going to be throwing games or anything, but, you know, you mentioned the health and all of this. You're sitting in a pretty good spot right now. 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. This is where you can uh, chime in on the show. That's in the uh, Paris Jewelers inbox. We'll see our friends at PJ's, 22 locations across the country. April 18th, final game of the regular season. Edmonton Oilers and Connor McDavid at Nathan McKinnon in the Colorado Avalanche. Mile high. With an Art Ross trophy. On the line. That would make for a pretty fun game, man. Can you imagine if they're both tied going into oh. that one? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be, I, I'd be betting the over. I'd be betting the over in that game 100%. Uh, so, man, but here's the situation. What if the Oilers can't win? They can't move up, can't catch the Canucks, and have home ice in the first round locked up? There's no way you're sitting Connor McDavid with the Art Ross Trophy on the line going head-to-head with Nathan McKinnon, is there? But then what if something happens to him? 
I know. That's a good. That's a, that'll so be the fun debate. So there's a lot of what ifs here. I mean, that that's what I'm saying. Uh, that would you, suck if you're only playing him to win the Art uh, Ross. You're playing to win the Stanley Cup. Hurt or yeah, something you're, like you, that, you, like. you, you. I know MJ says they say they don't care, but they do. But at that point, yeah, you're you're playing for a cup here, right? That that that's the goal. I don't know, man. That'd be an interesting discussion. We'll get to it if it if it comes up. If it comes up, we'll get to it. But just store that away because I could see us having that discussion here at some point today. Uh, Buckaroos in it says, McKinnon went in the heart because he hasn't won it before. It takes away justifying qualities he had during the season. It's like winning by default. Yeah, but I'm just saying, yep. you, you see, you we see understand narrative this, yeah, trophies yeah, yeah. get delivered by writers, not just in the National Hockey League, but in other leagues as well. Yeah. Um, his season very much justifies him winning the heart, but... Like a month and a half ago in the lock shop, I said, bet on McKinnon to win the heart right now because he's having a phenomenal season. And another one of the boxes that he checks off is that he hasn't had that heart trophy and there's the narrative there that he's going to get one. So it's part of the discussion, whether you want to be, whether it should be, should it? Probably not. Um, but it is. This isn't your first stance with the, uh, yeah, the I mean, PHWA, is it? I mean, we know how this now. goes. Uh, Freezer Bank says, give it to McKinnon because it's his turn, LOL. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. Don't act but like you don't know it's, it. It's a thing. It's it's. Don't be surprised. Yeah, and they'll say, "Oh no, it's not." It is. I don't need to. Come on. All right, seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Keyword for those of you asking, uh, both on the inbox and over on YouTube, uh, the keyword is seven thirty five today. We will give you the keyword for the EST flyaway to Vegas, but. We're only at 95 likes right now, so I'm not sure you've really earned the keyword today. We're not we're not even halfway to 200. I'd say that constitutes yanking the keyword. We've for been today. banging us. So I'm going to text Double Maddie right now. Say, hey Maddie, just so you know, no keyword on the Nielsen show today yeah. because apparently the the stream was broken. We only had 95 likes. Yeah. Why would we give out Why would we give out a keyword if the stream's broken? Because the thumbs up button clearly isn't working. How do we know they're even going to get our word? <laughs> you want to uh, prank us, eh? This goes two who's, ways. Who's getting pranked now? Oh, this yeah. goes two ways, you fools. <laughs> hammer the uh, hammer the thumbs up. Hammer the likes. If we can get to... I mean, I think we got to be at 150 by 735 if you want this key word. My goodness. Do you not want to win do, a trip to Vegas? Do you even like Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> this is a disrespectful to Vegas as a city. All right, let's get to your cool bet hotline of the day. Oilers and Blues tonight. And uh, we will obviously put together a little EST parlay a little bit uh, a little bit later on. Kings in Winnipeg as well. Well, that's a big one too. Red Wings Lightning. Island Flyers are out of a uh, they're back in the wild card now. They're out of that divisional Is spot Washington as well. Up yeah. into the- Washington's into that 3 spot. Islanders Flyers tonight from Philly. This is starting to become kind of repetitive. For your cool bet hotline of the day. But when you deliver winners, you might as well just continue down the same path. You're not an idiot. No. <laughs> Why would you go off a winning track? Connor McDavid, over one and a half points, minus 123. In stone. That's your cool bet hotline of the day. Tattoo it. It hits. Why would we go away from it? The Connor McDavid, so against the Ducks. On uh, on Saturday, I was I was putting this together. I was looking at the game and trying to figure out where I was going to go. You couldn't even bet on McDavid to have one point. It was completely off the board. And McDavid to have two points in that game was minus 182 or something like that, which is just insane. And then even the number on McDavid over three, like tonight, McDavid over two and a half points is plus 200. That's nuts. Two to one for McDavid to have three points. So we'll get on McDavid over one and a half points. It's like that horse saying, right? <laughs> you ride him until he bucks you. And that's what we're doing with uh, with Connor McDavid over one and a half points at minus 123. To me, this nine this number should be like minus 140. This is a this is a little show pony taking you around. It's never going to buck yeah. you off. You're just going around the track. It's prancing what, around. It's 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 one of those little horses. It's a beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah, you're that you're, physically my toes are like touching. Yeah, you're not going to get This guy's not this bucking, me, not off. bucking <laughs> me off. There's no chance. That's what the McDavid over one and a half is. It's a Shetland pony. 
Is that what it is? I think those sure. are called Shetland ponies. <laughs> Miniature ponies. Shet- yeah, yeah, a, Shet- yeah. a Shetland pony. McDavid minus one and a half or over one and a half points at minus 123 is a grown ass man like one of us or a woman riding a Shetland pony. You will not be bucked off. Minus 123 tonight. That is your cool bet hotline of the day. As X Ray J says, if it ain't broke, right, don't fix it. If it's not broken, do not fix it. So we are going to uh, ride with that one today. As for that game in general, uh, Oilers minus 208 on the money line, regulation line tonight. I, don't know, I could I could see this game going to overtime. Mm. I might stay away from the regulation line, but it is minus 127 if you, uh, if you want. If you like this game to go to overtime, plus 335 tonight. I just want to see. So what did I say? McDavid's with minus 123 over one and a half. What is Kucherov over one and a half minus 105? So there's like an extra 20 going the other way on uh, on Connor McDavid there. Very interesting. March Madness, I do want to see. Uh, Connecticut is an 11 and a half point favorite over Alabama. And Purdue are nine and a half point favorites over NC State. And to be honest with you, I think I might be on both of those favorites to cover the large spreads. Okay. But we'll get into that a little Let's... bit more as we uh, we work our way through the week this morning. Shadow Hiker says, checking in from Tokyo, boys. Be home in a week. See you soon. Hey, we don't have Tokyo on the uh, map yet, do we? Zach, come put it on the map. And where is Zach? Uh, what time does this guy start around here? We ventured into Asia a bit, but... Uh, might be the first Tokyo. Did we hit the likes? I hate to have to threaten on the on the YouTube channel. One thirty two. Well, you, you got about seven minutes to give us you know, twenty eight more likes. Easter or Monday and more all. Likes. It's it's one of those days where maybe you lessen the expectation. But no, no, the numbers are still here. Like <laughs> the people are while you're both you're watching. I know. Just hit the thumbs up. That's it. I mean, look, I'm not blaming anybody listening on iHeart. Tune in. There's nothing you can do. You can't do. Neither. No, I, listen I, I to sportstalk.com. Yeah. There's nothing you can. You're do. You're doing all you can. But if you're watching the game, if you're watching the show, just hit the thumbs up. That's all you have to do. All right, on the way. Second half of this hour looks like this. Keyword for Vegas in about four or five minutes. We're also going to announce the Nasty Club member that won the Nasty Club entry in. Maddie sent the name over after doing a random draw for it. I'll have to bring that name back up. So we're going to have two qualifiers in the second half here uh, just after 7.30. And mm, that's good. Boy's got some paninos waiting for us over there. Come on. Those things are ridiculous. We'll get to it more during the segment, but they're huge. Like, no no human needs to eat one of those things by themselves. I'm waiting for the arm tap. I have a family of four. We split one over the weekend. You can split one and then split the split. <laughs> yeah, so my family split the split. Yeah. I ate the other half Good. of the Well, split. that works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. It, was, it was fine. It's all you need. Mars and Elizabeth are, Daddy, can we have more? I said, no, this is my half. <laughs> you had your third of the other half. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's good for Italian Center Shop. And we're going to go back to Connor McDavid, who's in the elitist of elite company. We're going to get into that a little bit coming up here around 745 today. And 20 interested parties signing NDAs in the pursuit of your Edmonton Elks. And save the text. They're not my Edmonton Elks. Uh, we'll get into that well, coming up more. here. It's not going to be community owned, right? Next <laughs> as well. You're damn right it won't be yours. Let's get to a sports update with Lieutenant Eric. It's game day as the Oilers are on the road visiting the Blues in one of eight games around the NHL. Join Tom Gazzo alongside YouTube chair for the Oil Stream pregame show. Coverage starts at 5.30 tonight right here on Edmonton Sports Talk, the iHeartRadio app, TuneIn Radio app, and on YouTube. Just one game yesterday, Canucks over the Ducks, 3-2. Oilers six points back of Vancouver for top spot in the Pacific. Edmonton also have two games in hand. Toronto Blue Jays earning the opening weekend split down in Tampa following a 9-2 win yesterday. The Jays are in Houston tonight to open a three-game series. First pitch, 6-10. March Madness, Purdue and North Carolina State are off to the Final Four. The Boilermakers defeating Tennessee 72-66, while the 11th-ranked Wolfpack got past number 4-ranked Duke 76-64. Purdue will go up against NC State, while Alabama takes on UConn in the under Final Four game. On the women's side, Elite Eight action will continue later tonight. Number 3, LSU battle number 1, Iowa, while... Three, UConn will take on number one, USC. 
LeBron James had 40 points, leading the Lakers over the Nets, 116-104. Raptors, meanwhile, their losing streak hits 13 games yesterday with a 135-120 loss to Philly. The Raps are at home to the Lakers tomorrow night. Stefan Yager winning his first PGA Tour event. He closed with a nine straight pars for a 367. Winning the Houston Open, Canada's Brad Gushu. He's looking to prove to 4 0 this morning at the Men's World Curling Championship. The Gushu rank currently in action up against Italy. Italy leading 3 2 that game in the sixth end. Sports update brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda and dealer principal Mitch Lewicki, who is off this week in Switzerland watching the World Men's Curling Championships. If you're like me, you like to picture yourself in luxury, even though there's absolutely no way you could afford it. And if you can, well, even better. Thankfully, I picture myself in something that is luxury, but still absolutely affordable, like the all-new Mazda CX-90 from Park Mazda. With the new luxury features like facial recognition settings and quilted detail Napa leather seating, I can pretend to be comfortable with all of my proper settings activated without even touching a button, thanks to Mitch Lewicki and the great staff of Park Mazda. I like to picture Mitch Lewicki in a tuxedo t-shirt because it says, like, he wants to be formal, but he's also here to party, too. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off Wire Road, parkmazda.ca. I've got something under my skin And the itch won't go away It's my original sin The poison that I crave Oh, Whale and the Wolf, EST House Band. You'll hear them here on Amateur Sports Talk in between shows. Boys will uh, keep the day moving along right here on EST. Boys, I'm listening on TuneIn, but it doesn't take much to flip the YouTube app open, hit the like button, flip back to TuneIn, hashtag no excuses. That flies in from Clint, uh, Danny T as well. I pulled over quickly on my commute. Oh, and well, like the, the stream on YouTube, no excuses, nasties, Danny T. So okay, well, Danny T. You guys are. You don't need to do that, Danny T. Pulling over. Hey, you and, don't need and to on, a, on a Monday, going into work, I know. which a lot of you aren't, and you can't even give I'm, a like. Uh, Danny T's doing it. Warms my heart. I'm getting emotional here. Ain't that something? Think about Danny T pulling over to give me the, uh, to give us uh, the thumbs up there. Um, God, that means a lot. Don't we, you know, look, we, we want the thumbs up, but we don't want you to pull over on the side of the road to give us the thumbs up. I mean, I wish that thumbs up could be two thumbs up. But the bar has been yeah, set. Like, the yeah. bar has been set. There's no excuses Real nice. now. I mean, you, well, now we look at it. We've hit that. We've already like one one seventy or something. And uh, now I can sit here and go, oh, so you only give likes when you want something. Interesting. <laughs> well, you want the keyword. That's why you're here. So uh, I'm going to give the wrong keyword and then say oh. April Fools. <laughs> Just kidding. I won't do that. Uh, all right. The keyword is the EST flyway to uh, to Vegas. It's kind of important. You still got this week, next week, the following week, and the following week after that to qualify. Four more weeks of qualifying, thanks to our great partners at FlyYEG. If you haven't checked it out yet, www.flyyeg.com. Listen for the keyword four times per day. Right here on Edmonton Sports Talk, crystal clear for your chance to win a trip to Vegas. Two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to a Cirque show. Presented by FlyYEG and the LVCVA. Nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from FlyYEG. Visit www.flyyeg.com. I will give you the keyword. And then you will text it in to 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Today's keyword on the Nielsen Show. First of four opportunities to qualify today. Today's keyword is party. P-A-R-T-Y. Oh. Why? Because I gotta. This isn't Adam Party, is what no, you're saying. No, okay, no, no. Yeah. That's where my mind yeah. immediately went. Nope. P-A-R-T-Y. Because uh, nothing like a party in Vegas. Sometimes you go to Vegas to party. Yes. 
Not just business trips. Nobody has ever partied as... The best to ever party in Vegas was Alexander Ovechkin after winning the Stanley Cup. That guy took it for a run. P-A-R-T-Y. P-A-R-T-Y. Party is your keyword today. Text it right now to 780-218-9999. We'll give you about four or five minutes to get in, and then YouTube Travel Call a qualifier. After we call that qualifier, we'll also give the name of the Nasty Club qualifier. One member of the Nasty Club gets added into this grand prize draw. We've drawn that name. We'll give you that name coming up, too. Maddie Wanda looked after all the randoming and all that stuff as well. Uh, I do want to... uh, and they're talking about people who party. And the others are playing the blues tonight. And I I had it set up. Well we gotta uh I, I thought I already had it in here. Let me let me bring it in again. You went blue. Because we're talking about, oh, this guy this guy likes to party and this guy likes to party. Well, I'm not sure anybody partied. As far as like not winning the Stanley Cup but still do, still partying. Was anybody ever better than this? Glory, Gloria, <laughs> Gloria, Gloria, I think I got your number, Gloria. My God. I like how it's a slow roll to get going. Yeah. Glory. Uh, and then he starts getting, and then you can tell he gets the beat going, and he's kind of. Yeah, but Brett Hall was in like the middle of probably a 40-day oh, a a, a bender, bender a at this half. point. But it's kind of that. Uh, it's kind of that tease to start it off, eh? Remember that bad boy? Peeking through the door. My Gloria. God. Gloria. I think I got your number. Gloria. Glory, Gloria. <laughs> this is the part where you're like, Glory. He might pass out. <laughs> he might not get to the rest of it. Glory, Gloria. 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 I think I got your number. Gloria! Oh, God. Part of me wants to see the Blues make another run. Why not? All right, that does would he, be, does uh, he have one more in he's him? He's got another one in him. <laughs> does Brett Hall have another run in him for the uh, St. Louis I'm Blues? I'm here for it. By the way, Brett Hall. So we're playing uh, NHL 24 quite a bit over the weekend. Myself, Marshall, the Muzz, to a lesser extent. And uh, we started pulling off the Michigan. Mm-mm. And, no way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had like four Michigan goals over the weekend. Marshall had three or four Michigan goals over the weekend. Last night, I go downstairs right before Easter dinner, and uh, the, the kids were playing. They were the all-time Habs alumni team, which is just stacked. It's a bunch of dudes from like the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And they were Marshall set it up. No helmets. <laughs> so him and the Muzz were the all-time Habs team. And he only went with them because I played him over the weekend as the Habs. All- so Marshall plays with the NHL all-time All-Stars. First line center, Gretzky. Second line center, Lemieux. Iserman. Like, this team is just stacked. And I play with teams from the Spangler Cup against. So, H.C. Davos, Ambry Piotta. So, I go downstairs yesterday. Marshall and the Muzz are losing 2-0. And uh, they were playing against uh, H.C. Frulunda from the Spangler. Marshall set it up. And they were the Habs all-time team. Because I played Marshall over the weekend, Habs all-time team, and I beat them 10-0. I just got to a point where I was up five nothing. I was like, "Well, what's the difference?" So I just put the hammer down and crushed him. It would led to a whole meltdown after, and you know it wasn't good. But uh, so him and the Muzz are losing two nothing. So I said, "Do you want Daddy to take turns on the remotes, and we can rotate them?" And so we stormed back. I pulled off the Michigan to put us up three two with about three minutes left with uh, John Bellavo in behind the net on the wooden stick. Oh just my like, goodness! Boom! I was just like, "Oh my god, look, we done it!" So I get a four two. Give the controller back to the Muzz to try to close it out. They blow a two-goal lead with, like, three minutes left. So then we get to overtime, and Cornoye on a breakaway in overtime buries it. And I was, I was the NHL 24 hero over the weekend. It was a lot of fun. But Brett Hall is on – this is why I thought about it. Brett Hall is on that all, all-time team. He's on the fourth line, but he's on the all-time team. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. NHL 24 is a good game. Fourth line. Yeah, he's on the Brett fourth Hall. line. That's I love a, it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so Marshall's rolling out a fourth line that has, like, Brett Hall – Yeah. And Bellavo and Rocket Richard. And I'm rolling out H.C. Davos' third line that has Andres Ambuel in his 20th <laughs> season. Uh, so it's been, it's been a lot of fun, though. But the Michigan is, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's it's nice to pull off. It's, it's tricky, though. Hey, like, uh, are, are you doing it? Well, I think it? we might have a little bit of a different setting. 
because we have to push Y twice and hold it the second time. Okay. To do yeah, it. I was going to so ask. We're not doing like the full bones. I was going to ask because like yeah. if, if you like I, I use the skill stick and it's quite tricky to do. And so I was like, man, if you're pulling it and Marshall and the Muzz are doing it, I'm like, wow, that's yeah, really no, impressive. Well, the they mu- have a the bright future. The doing it, but Marshall's, Marshall's pulling it off. So, yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. I love that game. It's a, it's a good time. <laughs> All right, Trev. <laughs> Damn, first cough of the show. I was going to try to make through That's uh, not bad here. I think here my cough's going away. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I got the Simbacord inhaler. We'll take it. Steroid Simba? inhaler. Simbacord, yeah. I hold it up all the ah, time. I guess. Spent, yeah. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> yeah. My cough goes away. I'm holding up the Simbacord inhaler. Uh, but it's working. It's clearing so up my So a cord, airways. hey? Do you Simbacord. Like sh- it's like a, yeah. getting a toilet. So it's the shape of Simba, but it's a longer cord, and you jam it down your throat, and you go, oh, it's working. It's working. but this is a great... Success here at 742, yeah, 742 having your first in. cough of the morning. 742 in. We are rolling. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. You're back, baby. <laughs> I'm feeling yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just, feeling it like I can, I can laugh yeah, yeah. and not completely yeah, cough yeah, up yeah, along. Yeah. It's a very positive step. Pulling off Michigan's. Not very coughing. positive You're step. Feeling it. Hey, as we call this qualifier, do you want to... Uh, we all get let's split, split, oh, a, split oh, a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's split a halfy. And uh, yeah, let's spice things up this morning, eh? Let's spice things up this morning. We're going to announce the name of our Nasty Club qualifier here as well. So two people about to have their name thrown in the mix here. Guys, that Brett Hull clip is an all-timer. I don't even think he had an official role with the Blues beside Team Legend. Exactly. St. Louis Blues Team Legend. Glory, 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 glory. I think I got your number, Gloria. God, that's real nice. Trev, you finding a qualifier? All right, we're going to get a qualifier right away. Then we're going to announce the Nasty Club qualifier, and you're going to be very excited about this if it is you. I mean, it's an easy way to uh, to slide on into the mix. Oilers and Blues tonight. We'll continue to get you set up for that in hour number three. Do you run the same top nine out there again? Have they found something in this uh, in this top nine? Is Henrik, in fact... A top six winger. What say you? You can uh, chime in on that one. Uh, Spencey Five Cents, he says, skill stick sucks. X to shoot all day. Uh, we use the skill stick. We shoot with the skill stick and stuff. Um, but uh, we also discovered how to hip check over the weekend. So Marshall and I had just been throwing hip checks out like crazy. It's like they're going to take the button away from us. So we're like, we got to use it as much as we can. And it's just hip check after hip check after hip check all day, which is uh, which is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Strummy's in says, my eight-year-old scored two this year and won his third year of U7. The kids are pulling off actual Michigans now. It's insane. As, a, as an opposing U9 coach, if a kid picks up the puck behind the net, I want to go knock it off his stick. I'm like, come on, man. This is insane. How can you be this skilled? And not because they're going to score against the team I'm coaching, but because kids shouldn't be pulling this stuff off nowadays. It's nuts. Uh, all right, Trev, who's our qualifier today for the ESC Flyway to Vegas? Today we have Dave. All right, let's go to Dave this morning. Dave, congratulations, man. Your name is in the grand prize mix. Let's go. Yes, it's exciting, isn't it, Dave? Sure is. Yeah, have you been to Vegas before, Dave? I have never been to Vegas, whoa, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who would you bring with you? I got to bring the wife, I think. Okay. My wife. Yes, your wife. Has she been to Vegas before? She has also never been to oh, Vegas. Oh, boy. First time Vegas trip for Dave and his wife. Well, you're one step Couple closer, newbies. man. Uh, well, right what, on. What, would you guys, what would you be most excited about? Uh, I think there's some pretty good shows and stuff. Yes, the wife loves to do yeah. a bit of shopping, and why not make a bit of money while you're there? Uh, man, you got it all figured out. You got Vegas figured out. Dave knows Vegas. Dave, best of luck, buddy. I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> How about Dave? Dave, I'm ready. I like that, Dave. I'm ready. Uh, Dave, right now, after qualifying this morning. Yes, Dave, you are the man. That's how you're going to get in the mix for text of the day today. Your yes, yes, he is the man text messages to 780-218-9999. Real Slim Davey hit us up in the 6 o'clock hour with this. Me, when my grandpa makes a coin appear from behind my ear. Yes! Yes! 
He the bar. is the man. <laughs> That's who just won, Dusty. The real Slim Davy. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, well, what are the odds of that? He's also the mixer text of the day today. He might. I mean, I think it's probably the runner-up so far. The king from the 1700s who has eight daughters and his fourth wife finally gives a birth to their first male heir. I think that's, that's, a real that's good still one. your front runner right now. But yeah, send us your text messages to 780-218-9999 for this. This is me when Lieutenant Eric rolls in with these paninos. Yes! Yes! <laughs> he, the is the he is the man! Uh, all right, let's quickly announce our Nasty Club qualifiers. So Dave gets in, and then Matty Wanick emailed in yesterday. And says, when you do the EST flyaway tomorrow, could you announce the qualifier from the Nasty Club, who will also go into the grand prize draw? I used a randomizer website and pulled the name. Here it is. This is our bonus Nasty Club qualifier. This is why it pays to be a Nasty Club member. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Alan Green. Congratulations to Alan Green. You are also, you are the one Nasty Club member. Who got the nasty club entry into the grand prize no, drop? He's got a little trophy beside him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like cool. That. It must be the website <laughs> yeah, yeah, kicks yeah. out the winner, and it comes with a little okay. sort of trophy. Alan Green, congratulations! Your name is going into the mix as well. If Maddie hasn't already contacted you, I'm assuming he will. Um, congratulations to Alan Green. You are also in the mix for the EST flyway to Vegas. Uh, all right, let's get to mm, that's good for Italian Center Shop, where everything they have is. Delicious. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. I was emailing back and forth with Ryan over there, and I said, hey, what, uh, what do you want to do next week? And he goes, it's going to be crazy busy there this week. And, of course, it was. I went in mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, let's get back to those paninos, the Spinelli panino. And I, I, I replied, and I said, I don't know. I don't know if we really like the paninos. April Fool's. April Fool's. April Fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must have thought it was hilarious. Now, I did it on Saturday. But knowing that today was Monday, I hope he got the joke. Yeah. But uh, proactive um, house made baguette, topped yeah. with olive oil, oregano, roasted red pepper spread, loaded with the mortadella, the capicoli, the salami, the provolone. Available hot or mild, wrapped in deli paper for an easy grab and go meal for any occasion. So, did Trev get one, or is this just for us? No, oh, yeah, no. Oh, so this is this from one half. These three slices. The, uh, we, we have taken three-fourths of a sandwich. Between okay, the right there. Look so at this. There's thing. one half of a half. Look at this thing. This yeah. is a quarter. This is a quarter of this what these things you, are bringing to the table. This will get you good for a lunch. This will carry They're like you through 10 bucks. Supper. Yeah. It, it's, it's lunch and it's dinner. Yeah. And it's absolutely terrific. And, I mean, good good job on them. You can you can flex in the panino. Any, I mean, it's a stallion. And, oh, uh, back, back again. It took this long. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, Listen, the donuts are great. You can have it every week. The pizza was terrific. But this whole segment could just be a Panino segment. Nobody would complain. No. We never complained about that in a million years. All right, let's get to... Mm, that's good. And it comes from a tweet I saw. From uh, I view him as a basketball guy. But he does churn out lots of good, like, random hockey stats. His name is Brian Swain. Ah. You know Swainer. So he rolls this out on Connor McDavid over the weekend. And anytime you're in this type of category, like when it's only you and Wayne Gretzky, mm -hmm. yeah, mm, that's good. So Connor McDavid, he's going to get to 100 assists, which, and I have it. Like, I didn't think in our life that we would see somebody record 100 assists in a National Hockey League season again. Like, since the high-scoring times of the 80s and early 90s, I didn't, and I know Joe Thornton had that good run. He had that one really great season. So I guess you know, he was around him. But I didn't think we'd ever see anybody hit 100 assists again in the history of the National Hockey League. Yet here we are. Swainer had this. Most assists in a 25-game span in a single NHL season. Wayne Gretzky, 60. Wayne Gretzky, 54. Wayne Gretzky, 52. Wayne Gretzky, 52 again. Wayne Gretzky, 50. Connor McDavid, 48. Like, he has put himself into this tier of helpers that only exists around Wayne Gretzky. Think about that for a second. And we know he's great. You watch him, and you're like, this guy's a freak. He's a cheat code. 
He's the most skilled player, I think, to ever play the sport of hockey. But the game's changed, and it's, it's trending back towards offense. I get it. But it's because you've got guys like this guy in the league who are just doing things that you didn't think you'd ever see again or haven't happened in the last 35 years. So Connor McDavid, 48 assists in his last 25 games. That was prior to the game against the Ducks. I think this was tweeted out on Friday. But the only other person to ever be better in this category is Wayne Gretzky. That's it. That's mm, the company you're in. That's good. That's, it. that's right. Mm. Mm, that's good was could basically also just be a Panino slash Connor McDavid segment. Mm, that's great. Really? Great one. I mean, we could yeah. probably get away with it every single time. <laughs> Belineski says Thornton had 96 in a season. Connor has 96 with 10 games left. Mm -hmm. well. This the, you would think that this sounds crazy. And it might. Well, it probably is. But if he ends up with 120 assists, I wouldn't even be shocked. Could he put up 24 assists in the next shocked. 10 games? It's like you, you, two four assist games, and you could probably get there, right? Why like not? two big assist games, sure. you could probably get there. And who's to put that past? Like, why not? He's getting 110 assists. For sure, he's getting 14 assists in the next 10 games. Can't bet on him now, especially near the end of the season. <laughs> Can't bet against him now, actually. He's going to do it. He'll he'll hit any number, any outline number that you have. He'll touch. Zulu's in and says, we are spoiled. Like hockey fans in general, especially you you here in Edmond. Of course you're spoiled by this yeah. guy. Down in the East Time Zone where they can't really watch him regularly or in the States where they can't. But out here in Western Canada. The National Hockey League in general needs to do a better job of marketing the most skilled player in the history of the game. Well, that's what I'm saying. You reciting all this here in this market is great. We all know that. Yeah, but exactly. But how, how, how much or how often is this, mm, that's good, and those numbers which are, you know, out of this world and only sitting next to one other guy whom we call the great one, are those, are, is all of this being talked about in other centers around the NHL today? I, I would bet not. But here we are. Um, but that just goes to show, I mean, he's he's in some really weird spots right now that a lot of athletes don't even get to. And we're spoiled here in Western Canada where we get to watch him regularly. It Not so much for around it's, the league. It's, but it's, it's, that, that's that's kind of the weird thing with this exercise. It's such a weird conversation and, and such a unique one. But you can't tell me that other markets are waking up this morning and that's the, the number one topic on their minds. Well, it should be. It should, it should I mean, be. It's the same. It goes back to the individual awards. There should be things happening. We know they aren't, and, and that's kind of the... I can't see why other teams would hold a significant grudge against the Oilers because you have Wayne Gretzky and all his talent in the 80s. Yeah. But then, like, you'll be jealous. Well, you, you could be jealous, I think. But, but then but to people also talk have about Connor McDavid delivered to you in a lottery after you had Wayne Gretzky? Yeah. I mean, it is, it is a rather ridiculous stroke of luck. After decades of ineptitude. Yeah. Well, but that's and that's that just adds to it. Like, like if, I, if I go out every day, work hard, and I win the lottery, okay, yeah. well, that's maybe I had it coming to me or something. But uh. yeah, but this, this is a guy who wins the lottery in the '80s, wastes it, does nothing, doesn't work for 20 years, wins the lottery again. Yeah, that's so. Imagine being the guy, like another organization who's like been grinding and grinding and been like, "Damn it, how's this happen?" But it should garner the conversation still, without the the jealousy or whatever partisan squabbles you want to get into. It's tough it's, not. All it is is tough. history. It's history. It's league history. Zedmo on the nasty chat says Gretzky's scoring record will never be broken. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, nobody's getting to 215. Could McDavid hit like 170 in a season? Yes. Yeah. I think he hit 170 in a season, but that's still 45 points back of the 200. And, uh, and 15. I watched a video of Gretzky setting the all-time in-season points record when he was 20. It was like 153. And it, was, it popped up on uh, my Twitter feed over the weekend. And, man, the game was so different. Like, we know it. We know it was. We get it. But, my God. Like, it, the game just operated at a different pace. And it's like Gretzky got the puck, 
sort of just skated untouched in behind the goal. Backhand feed through a wide open slot, and the moose is just waiting on the far side. Banged it like it's just. Yeah. That's why it's so difficult to compare. It's the Jordan the LeBron like thing all over again. Completely different Jordan, games. Jordan and LeBron all over again. Well, I will say the NBA in the '90s was a very much a different game than it is now. Oh yeah, very much a different. Oh game. yeah, look at Zach Eady. Like I said, like Zach Eady would have been. Remember when Greg Oden got picked first overall? How could I forget? Zach Eady would have been a first overall pick 25 years ago. Now he's going to go, I think, like late first round and probably never establish himself no, as yeah. any level of NBA star despite being the leading scorer in college basketball because he's yeah. seven foot four and he just has a post game. No, nobody, never, nobody ever throws the ball in to somebody in the post nowadays. <laughs> like, look at Giannis. Look at AD. Like, look at these guys. They don't post up. They're playing from the perimeter in, which is, it's a completely different game. But when you're putting up all these points playing against guys that, you know, have part-time jobs at, at the mechanic shop, how does that translate to modern day? And I think even if McDavid doesn't come close or touch some of those numbers, what he's doing with sports science and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, what the modern day game has, much, much tougher to do. Nothing taken away from Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan or those. But whatever camp you reside in, you have to understand that it was a different time and an easier time. If you were really, really good, yeah, I, th- I don't, I don't think that's unfair. No, it shouldn't be. That's right? why like they do have like era adjusted scoring. Sure, I don't know all the math behind the era adjusted scoring, um, but that might be one of the best ways to sort of put that together. Good morning, fellas. Can Connor get to a thousand points this year? I believe he needs twenty five. Yes, this is great. I was at the Flyers game on January second when he hit nine hundred. <laughs> it was okay. January second. Today's April 1st, and we're like, yeah, he's had 75 points since January 2nd. I think he could take a run at it. What? You can't say no. Yeah. You can't say no when it's McDavid blank. Can McDavid hit blank? Yes. Just say yes. Uh, what do you think? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Spencey 5 cents. He says, Curry was operating on a different level then, too. They made it look easy. That's what I, I want to go and watch. Like, I want to go back and watch two mid-level teams in the 80s play a hockey game. Because, like, the only 80s highlights you ever see are of the 80s Oilers, especially in this market. You're like, wow, these guys look like the Harlem Bloody Globetrotters out there. But you want to go back and watch the, Har- the Hartford Whalers? Yeah, yeah. Play the, I don't know, pre Mario Pittsburgh. No, that give me a Whalers Devils game. Give me a Whalers Devils game in the mid eighties, just to see kind of what the game was outside of Wayne being exceptional. Whenever you see Oilers highlights, seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. If you are watching on YouTube, hammer the thumbs up for us. That would be great. Helps push the show out to other people. Yeah, two hundred. Uh, two hundred is reasonable. It's risky. On an Easter Monday? The guy ain't coughing for you this morning. You got a likes through the roof. The, man, the man's re- here performing on an Easter Monday. Do you realize what I've been through to try to get this cough eliminated? <laughs> netty rinses. Which is when you're like squirting You the did the netty? Up. Man, I've been netty rinsing. You did the netty. Oh, yeah, I love the netty rinse. Some people get grossed up by the netty rinse. I like the netty Were rinse. Were we telling you last week to do it? Was that you or somebody? No, it was. I was talking to somebody else, but I'm glad that you're on it. Well, you, they should do it too. UConn was doing it. Um, UConn like, does it on a regular basis. Yeah. But I like to netty rinse, and I put in extra powder. Of course. Because then it really gives Why you not? a kick. If you're going to do it, you might yeah. as well, eh? I think it's the closest I'll ever get to doing nose drugs. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I'm loving it. You call them your sniffing salts at home, eh? Yeah, yeah, pretty and you much. you put a bunch in your hand, and you go like this. And you so I've been, I've been grinding through this cough to get to this moment for everybody. This is so let's hit 300 likes today. Yeah, if we get to 400, he'll do the neti pot on the post-show show. When, I mean, I would. Why? I would. It's kind of gross, but I'd do it. It's not here, though, is it? We'll, we'll, we'll. I'll fill up some hot water, and you can just pour it up. No, it has to be. It has to be, has to be boiled for you know. It has to be distilled. That type of thing. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Let's. Uh, here's what we need. Somebody right now to play kind of easy. That's that's good. I mean, it's Connor McDavid. 
being at have Gretzky a, like that. Well, I've been mean, talking know, the whole time. I mean, I'm going to get into this when you do now, your update. Yeah. When you do your update, uh, we'll get into that. Uh, let's get to uh, we got an update coming up. But if you want to play kind of easy trivia this morning, 780-218-9999. Text YouTube Trav. He's sitting over there in the corner, all lonely. He's waiting for you to text in. Text in and let him know that you'd like to play kind of easy trivia today. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Gift certificate to Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual. Up for grabs. Uh, if you're listening on TuneIn or on iHeart or EdmontonSportsTalk.com, just tell your friends about what we're doing over here at EST and get some uh, static-free sports entertainment every single morning. If you want to play kind of easy trivia, 780-218-9999. If you are looking for work, well, Eric, got more details on Claiborne mm-hmm. Services because they want you. Oilers back in action tonight on the road visiting the Blues in one of eight games around the NHL. You can get set with Tom Gazzola and YouTube Trev to have your oil stream pregame show. Coverage starts at 5.30 here on Edmonton Sports Talk. You can catch it on the iHeartRadio app, TuneIn Radio app, and watch the boys live on YouTube. Last night, the Canucks over the Ducks, 3-2 Oilers. Six back of Vancouver for top spot in the Pacific. Edmonton also having two games in hand. The Jays earning the opening weekend split down in Tampa following a 9-2 win over the Rays yesterday afternoon. Justin Turner for RBIs in his first homer as a Jay. Toronto will visit Houston tonight to open a three-game set. First pitch, 6-10. March Madness Final Four is set. Number one, Purdue will be taking on the 11th-ranked North Carolina State Wolfpack. While Alabama will tangle with UConn, those final four matchups set for Saturday. On the women's side, Elite Eight action will continue later tonight. Number three, LSU battle number one, Iowa, while number three, UConn takes on number one, USC. LeBron James had 40 points, leading the Lakers over the Nets, 116-104 over the Raptors. Their losing streak hit 13 games yesterday with a 135-120 loss to Philly. The Raps host the Lakers tomorrow. Canada's Brad Gushu on the pebble this morning at the Men's World Curling Championships, looking to improve to 4-0. Canada currently in action against Italy. And we can tell you a score on that. Italy up 4-3 that game in the eighth end. Sports update brought to you by Claiborne Services. Take your career to the next level with Claiborne Services. They're hiring all positions, including journeyman bricklayers and apprentices of all levels. Take advantage of their outstanding mentorship program and work with peace of mind, knowing they are an industry leader in safety. For more, visit www.claiborneservices.com. Or make it easy and give Jeff a call, 780-910-6728. What say you? Hey, nasty crew. We got the Nelson Show flu. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. What say you? Hey, nasty crew. My wife thinks I got better things to do, but there's nothing I can do about it. We're listening online. We catch up with the podcast when we fall behind. We're texting in the nasty chat what's on our mind. 7802189999. No more interference from Cobra and Intra to Tati and Eric and all in the back. It's like Rashinsky and Noodles. Gadget can gauge it. If it's a to go back to make a little wager. We can't wait for the Monday mandate. Sharky's always on time. Tommy's always late. Would you like to come to Forget about the old place. Number one in the text race. We don't miss all the commercial breaks, but we sure miss Nickelback today. We want to hear some hot takes and we want to hear Renee. Why don't hold the neck up when I want our kids away? Beat up the tire fire and remember that name. We love every goal song, but what about the games? Matter of Matter of Paul, Drager, and Janir. It is Christmas season, but they sound like reindeer. Button is my cousin in the tales of the north. All the fun and game and pleasure. Does he go on? What say you? AM Nasty Crew, we got the Nelson Show flu, and there's nothing we can do about it, and there's nothing we can do about it, and there's nothing we can do about it. 805 with the Nielsen Show. Thank you very much for being here this morning. Ryan Rashad coming up in about uh, 20 minutes with the Monday morning Got Your Back mandate. He said he was good to join us today, unless it was an early April Fool's, but uh, Shoggy should be by if he can find the time. Uh, to take away from his golf simulator. Uh, he, hey, look, every good worker deserves a break, and I think that would yeah. be his, maybe his That's first 15 point. of the day. Hey? Yeah, he's been on the links <laughs> since 5.30 this morning. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, let's play a little kind of easy trivia to get us rolling. Of course, you can text us anytime. Parachuelers inbox 780-218-9999. One of you will end up winning text of the day today for a and And uh, Nielsen Show coming at you hot from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studio this morning. If you've not yet tried those Popeye's wings, you're missing out. It's as simple as that. All right, kind of easy trivia. Who's playing kind of easy trivia today? Trev, who do we got? We've got Ryan. All right, Ryan is going to play kind of easy trivia today, looking to get his hands on one of those beautiful gift certificates from Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual, casualest place ever in the Hampton Inn on the corner of 137th Avenue, Mark Messier Trail, now with the 6 o'clock or lager on tap. Uh, we, hit, we hit Mr. Mike's over the weekend. We skipped it in for dinner. Uh, what night was that? Friday night, maybe? Yeah, pickle out. Friday night. Uh, pickle out. I like oh, if pickle, you order the pickle, in. The pickle came in. Okay, I like they give me like a bag of pickles if you get pickle out for a while. No, no, your pickle outs, you know, no yeah. the pickle came in, but uh, Marshall ate my pickle. <laughs> yeah, he loves the uh, he loves the pickles from Mr. Mike's. So uh, I said, oh, pickles in. I'm going to take this out. And he goes, Daddy, can I have it? Wow. I said, of course you can, son. I'd love to be able to provide pickles with Mike sauce on them for you. An Easter pickle at that. Hey? Oh, God. Easter Friday pickle. Good Friday pickle. Good Friday pickle. Good Friday pickle. Uh, who doesn't love a good Friday pickle? Uh, all right, Ryan's playing. Six o'clock or lager on tap at Mr. Mike's in the Hampton Inn on the uh, corner of 137th Ave and Mark Messier Trail. That road's named after the moose. Uh, all right, let's go to Ryan. Ryan, you ready to play? You betcha. All right, I'll start the ticker. After I read the first question, you need three of five. Good luck, man. Here we go. Who did the Oilers beat on Saturday? Ducks. Which Oiler leads the league in assists? McDavid. Which Maple Leaf scored his 60th of the season over the weekend? I don't care. Which Oilers scored 60-plus last season? McDavid. Who do the Oilers play tonight? St. Louis. Gloria! Gloria! I think I got your number! That's good. No! No! Oh, my God. Damn it, Shake! Stop it! They are going to remember that AM radio is a viable and modern source for news and entertainment. Totally. People don't listen to AM like they used to. Seems like it's more about FM and color TV. That's stupid. It sure is, Kevin. I'm stoked. You stoked? I'm stoked. Just I'm so stoked. stoked. You yeah. cannot come to my house. No, no, no. Not today. You cannot come to my house. No, no, no. Not today. All right, congratulations. He nailed that. Yeah. Five for five. Because who cares? Which Maple Leaf scored his 60th over the weekend. And then to drop the the Gloria on us. That's extremely well done. Good tone and everything. Someone's that, been practicing. Some advanced thinking Someone's, this morning. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Ryan. You're very successful. All right, we got Rashog on the way. We got the orange and blue breakfast still to come as well. And you know what I wanted to lay out here before we get to three questions too many? So we've been, uh, we've been sitting on this for quite some time. And we know Dallas from Nelson, which I'm assuming is Dairy Queen and Nelson's probably open already. Think the Dairy King, yeah. Uh, he has a song that we haven't played yet on this show. And he he thinks it would it would hit. And we've had this. We've had we've been around for a while. Other people might have heard it. Other places might have played it. But we haven't played yeah. it yet. And you know you're watching the game on Saturday and you see the crowd singing along with us in the third period. And he's got a nice uh, he's got a nice take on it here. And it could be it's not like a crazy pumping up song, but it's a give you chills song. Mm-hmm. So let's take a, let's take a listen to Dallas from Nelson here on a it's it's Easter Monday right like it's. Let's see what we can do with this. I think this is good. Almost heaven, central Alberta, east of the mountains on the North Saskatchewan River. They score goals there, brings teams to their knees. Best NHL fan base, best team in the league, oil country goals. Bring the cup home to the place where it belongs. Edmonton, Alberta, 
Oil country mama, bring it home, oil country gold. All those memories of cups before her, hoisting Lord Stanley with the 84 oilers. Four more followed, the 80s were on fire. Now we've come close a few times, but since then we've been dry. Oil country goes, bring the cup home to the place where it belongs. Edmonton, Alberta, oil country mama, bring it home, oil country goes. I hear the noise in the overtime It calls me all tied up But we've got us a sweet power play And seeing that red light I get the feeling The cup's gonna come home Here to stay, here to stay Oil country goes Bring the cup home to the play it belongs Edmonton, Alberta Oil country mama Bring it home Oil country goes Oil country goes Bring the cup home To the place Where it belongs Edmonton, Alberta Oil country mama, bring it home, oil country gold. All right, so there you go. That is from Dallas from Nelson. Bang that out over a month ago. We've kind of been sitting on it. But it's April 1st. You're starting to head down the stretch now towards the playoffs. There is I a- think it's a nice, relaxing, calming... Presence to calm it, before you know? the storm, stretch yeah. run type of thing, kind of a waiting in the waiting the weeds um, feel to it. Um, I do prefer though. Look, you you know me. I'm a, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. Give me a go Oilers go, and I'll take I'll take one of those, please. Yeah, you, you, you like that one? Give me a give me a tried and true, or maybe a let's go Oilers if the mood suggests. But uh, what's look. going on with Rashad Gray now? Why is he? Is he? Oh no, he's in the. Well, he uh, he says, uh, "Do you have a show?" I said, "Yes." That's why I texted you yesterday. I texted doing, him he, yesterday. I see, said, "We have a show." You can't do the April Fool's joke after we've already. Is said this a hilarious April yeah, Fool's joke? Well, I don't know. I don't now, know what's going on here. Yeah. I texted him yesterday. Hey, Shoggy, just a heads up: we do have a show tomorrow. And he said, "Oh, great, thanks." Yeah, but then he realized today's April Fool's, and so now he's trying to spring the joke. I don't know. This might be April Fool's. This might be an April Fool's. Uh, all right, what, what say you? 780-218-9999. This he, guy. He's playing around. He goes, he's, uh, he's it says around. no show. I said, this is a different text thread. That was, uh, he's replying to my you text. You just texted him last night. I texted yeah, him last no, night. He's, he's uh, come on, we can't this be This guy, this he's now. killing me here. Killing me. Uh, all right, let's get into three questions too many today. Lieutenant Eric, do you have a liner for the segment? Three questions to many. It's brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda, where dealer principal Mitch Lewicki will have that song from Dallas and Nelson on repeat throughout the dealership all day today. Park Mazda, your dealer for life. How about Tommy Gazzola with a hot take today? Leaning in. Tommy Gazzola says, guys, that old country road, he's not talking about like Dallas remake, just the song in general. Yeah. He goes, that a country road song is an overrated song, just my two cents. <laughs> well, it's Tommy Gazzola. He's up and at him. He's ready to roll today. It's a bit of a snoozer. I like when Tommy comes in with... Uh, well, I think when they sing in the games, it's kind of, it's like a fun sort of no, thing. No, I know, but this, what is a soccer? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, come on, what do we... <laughs> anyway, I like some spicy Stick Tommy to the go, go team, in. go. That's what we need to do. We got to discuss... Enough sing song. What is this, uh, daycare? Or... Rashad's good, he's going to join Sports. us. We got to discuss text message etiquette here. Found though. it, LOL, apologies, yeah. I'll be ready. Well, there you go. Uh, all right, do you have a uh, Twitter account? At Lieutenant underscore Eric, you can follow uh, on Twitter and give our uh, station account a follow as well at YEG Sports Talk. We're over the 5K, but uh, keep it locked on there to uh, all the details on the shows and when those Vegas keywords will be coming as well. Your next chance uh, during the hangout with one Matthew Iwanek later today to which... And a it, spicy Tommy Gazzola. Is, is it Matt and Tommy in? I don't know who the guy... Like, I, well, I, mean, I would assume they're in. I mean, 
but we're I, working I, today. Some some tight some days we know like yeah we don't know who else guest, is in on the you know a clue yeah, yeah. a hint maybe Tommy won't but yeah. So stay tuned for that nine o'clock in your next chance at the keyword. All okay. right, question number one, boys. What's an April Fool's joke about EST that you think you could have pulled off today? We could have rebranded as uh, AST Alberta Sports Talk. Oh wow! And talking flames this morning. Oh God, that's gross. Yeah, but you know that's that would have been a good of the one, joke. Right? I think Elks Sports Herd was talk. doing that on uh, on Twitter. I saw it was the. Uh, Were they going to start talking stamps? Yeah, the Elks herd. Hilarious. They switched their logo today to a red elk, and it's called the Alberta herd. Uh, they're cheering on the stamps, and you know, just provincial teams, and they, they're, they're digging in. New profile pick. Uh, Alberta Sports Fan Hub. I mean, I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to believe them here, but uh, when can you do the pranks? Till noon, isn't it? Till it's noon still or noon, I think. Eh, it's hilarious yeah. pranks till noon. So we got we got today good. The the nasty chat got us around six thirty. Eric's doing his yeah. update, and everybody's like, we can't hear him. The sound's down, and Trev and I are in full blown panic mode. And we're like, it looks like it's working. What's going on? Just beautiful. It was well done. That came out of the Discord, I guess. That was uh, that was real nice. Duck Dad says could have been the Shanks relocation day today. That would have been a good one. Uh, Murray wouldn't have liked that, though. He would. <laughs> if Murray wants to be there for that day. Yeah, yeah. Murray from the ranch is, like, fully on board with the Shanks relocation. You know what? If we ever do get Shanks, we should announce it on an April Fool's Day for people to think it's an April Fool's, but we're legitimately That's, like, we got it. I'm here for saving important good news for April 1. Yes. And saying it on it, because then nobody knows. Who exactly. Is, who's the fool now? Um, that, would remember be, that, for next that would year, be pretty man. funny. Yeah. I uh, I like that. I don't like this day to be honest. I, I kind of stay off the internet. I try to like just it's. Well, you're gonna get caught at some point. You always get caught with something. I saw but one it's say, so obvious now that it's out, and it's just like ah. Formula One purchased MotoGP for three point oh, six billion. Oh, stop it! Stop I was like, it! Wait stop a second. It, stop it, stop Bo- MotoGP for six point yeah. three billion. Come on, three point six billion. Come on. People re-signing on, on yeah. weird contract extensions and and. Uh, as far as what we could have, uh, what we could have pulled off, I don't know. Dave Jameson midday show. People, because he, you know, people, what if he's been out and about with the Elks here recently? Yeah. yeah. He might have been able to pull that one off. He'd be an emotional. I'd, I, when I found out it's spring, I'd be like, oh, you hurt me. That like, would hurt. Know, yeah, that, that would hurt. That would kind of be a, <laughs> that's not a nice move for anybody. <laughs> that's true. Question number two. Guys, with the final four now set, which team do you think is going to win it all in the madness? North Carolina State. Well, you got to ride North Carolina State now. I, my big dog, my big cats in Arizona are out. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be UConn, but for the spirit and purpose of this uh, Zane Do you have Purdue going question. to the final? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, if, I should. I mean, if, if Purdue, who do you have them going against in the final? Arizona? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I think UConn wins it. Like, UConn just hasn't been touched. Yeah. Like, nobody's had a sniff against UConn. Now, could they find a way... To slow down the seven foot four Canadian on Purdue and Zach Eady, assuming they get by NC State, they're a significant favorite, and I think they will. I feel if anybody's going to figure that out, it's got to be UConn. They've just been rolling over teams. Yep. It's nuts. So yeah, I guess you have to go with the number but one seed coming in the tourney and back to backs for UConn. Nobody talks about the Crimson Tide and their Cinderella run to the Final Four. I don't know. I don't. Right. I don't see that. <laughs> I don't think they. I don't Roll think they got Tide. All right. Question number three. Guys, had some. You see this one come in? It came in via text message. It was about. It was a guy who was not happy with the high sticking rule. I saw this, and, I, and then this. He, said, he said, "What other rules in sports do you just not get?" He's like, "Why can't you touch a puck with a high stick in hockey? Like, why? Well, why not?" And you know, I I think probably from like a, you don't want sticks up around heads safety. And stuff. Thing. Safety, yeah, like it's there for all rules are there. For but a his reason, question then. was, which other rule in all sports that you kind of are you like? Why? Like, what is it? Well, the NFL and their their not one specific rule, but the way they handle kickoffs, which has now been changed. Now they're I mean, changed. That's, that's yeah. all changed. But that was kind of, I mean, it, again, it was a it was a dead play uh, to start games. You go through a whole pregame rigmarole and and then ha- have a commercial break. Um, I did say like the use of hands in soccer. Maybe you do away with that, and then you can do whatever you want. Maybe using feet in basketball. Yeah, because as soon as your foot hits it, it's whether you mean to or not. It's like, a you football, think you've yeah. seen Doncic with the finger roll. Wait till you yeah. incorporate feet into the game. Then you'll see a show. I, uh, you know what? I'm going to ask this of you because you are a soccer guy. You know what? I always, I, 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 why don't they just stop the clock? Why do they have to go to added time? Like, why, why, why can't they just stop the clock in soccer? Like they could. But why? So is there a reason why? Like, what's the main driver behind it? 
Because could you ball. not just stop it like every other sport ever when the ball goes out of bounds and stop it when a guy's down and play like whenever play is not going, stop the clock and then when play starts, start. Instead, we have to you know we're watching uh, at Hudson's, we're watching the soccer game, the Canadian match. Yes, and it was nil nil when I arrived. Yes, um, and at the we're we're sitting there at the end of the second half and Maddie's like, there's probably gonna be nine, ten, eleven minutes. And I'm like, well why why don't we just stop the clock? During the game, is there a, is there a main reason behind that, Rick? If if we were stopping the clock on every time a guy kind of went down to waste, I think it takes you're then changing the game essentially, and you're leading into stoppages of play, which lead into then commercial breaks. Which lead, I mean, you you can see where this goes. So instead of doing that, the clock runs, and then you get the controversial moment when the ref goes, "Huh?" And they keep they keep track. But it's not keeping track like starting and stopping to that exact millisecond of time. So you're like, well, how much is the extra time? Yeah, be? And that always what, drives me nuts. But that's where it's always. And then during extra time, within that extra time frame, so say it's six minutes, you're playing within that six minutes, say a goal is scored. So now you, you have to add yeah, on like another minute. Into the but how much time. is that? Because it doesn't stop either. So you, crazy to me. But that, that leads to the... <laughs> That leads to the open-ended conversations of, oh, how much time is going to get now? Instead of just doing it, you know, stopping and stopping and stopping it, and every time the ball goes out of play, you stop it, hit a 30-second commercial. Like, it would just it would slow the game down to such an extreme. And I think one of the benefits of soccer is it's a continuous. No commercials. Even Formula One are breaking for commercial now during a race. Yeah, yeah but even when somebody's laying down on the ground for six minutes, yeah. we don't cut away. We're just sitting here watching a guy. You can stop the clock there. Yeah, and then you can just go to the bathroom. Out. You can do stuff. You can do, but there's no there's no break from the play. It's still there. Uh, teams, they're taking that time to do strategy or whatever. So they don't do it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know why when they I was, started I was just the game. to save money on timekeepers. Well, that could be it too. They, How they, it they, originally they, started, you know. But but the, the fact that they could get so much money with commercial breaks. And in today's world, they don't. That it confuses me, but it's it's the flow. It's all it's all supposed to be one continuous motion. Uh, Jerry Modijong and Dean Millard on the hangout today. That's a real That's nice a one. Stout Modijong Millard. Good. Tommy said he's on his way in, and uh, and Maddie Awanik oh, as well. So the, we got the whole crew. That's gonna be a nice hangout today. Uh, all right. Uh, there's your three questions for the great staff. Over at Park Mazda. And yeah, that's a fun conversation. Uh, one rule. One rule that you're like, eh, eh, you change that. What do you think? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. All right, let's do this. Timberlake rocks. Is that is that a mandate of yours? What are we talking about here? Good question. Can some of it be about sports? Yeah. Fun? All he needs to do is just get in front of people and state his case. If they had the mandate from the people, blah, blah, blah. I don't know where that information came from, but I would, I would question it. Time for the morning mandate with Ryan Rashad. This is what sports broadcasting is all about. You know what? That may be a good point, Ryan. <laughs> you broke the story, Ryan. Rashad is one giant six foot two pile of Charmin. All right, it is the Monday morning Got Your Back Mandate with Ryan Rashad, gwebpod.com slash Y-E-G. I think the boys were streaming a little pod last night, and uh, Ryan Rashad steps away from the golf simulator to join us on the show this morning. Shoggy, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, man? I got this crazy reflection that just started off through my blackout curtains off of <laughs> a picture I have and into my eyeball. Look at that. I was just going to say, terrible. how can you be on the show last week claiming to be like crazy tech guy and then get hit with sun in the face today, Shoggy? Well, I can't control the sun, but give me a second here. Man. I can't. It's I'm a beautiful be morning out at Rashad. It is a beautiful morning. Rashad yeah, Greens, yeah, hey? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That, the I'm, music I'm going. I'm going to be able to hear you for a second. Okay, once I okay. Fix this. All right, he's going to fix this. Let's see. Let's. He's going to... He's going to try to close it. I thought he said he had like black curtain. How much Connor darker can it get? Nance. It's got to be, this is going to be. Like uh, here's Ryan Rashog, and he's, he Check returns. One, two. Uh, yeah, Check, there we are. We Check got one, you. Two. We're good. What, what'd you do over there? The, sh the thing's gone. Yeah, so what I did, Dusty, is I uh, closed the curtain. Ah, better. makes sense. And, makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Man, you are a tech guy. I do it, Shoggy. Yeah. Hey, was <laughs> your uh, text message to me this morning, was that an April Fool's? Or was it no. a funny joke? Uh, what was this? I, for some reason, I thousand percent thought we didn't have a show. And so I don't know why when I read, when you text me yesterday, I read it as we don't have a show. Like you were giving, giving me the, you the heads, heads up, up yeah. that there's no show. Oh, yeah. So then this morning when I got the email from Matt yeah. that here's your link, I'm like, we don't have a show. 
So I went. Now, when you text me, you texted on a chain. I, it was, was, uh, it was a chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. And I went back to just your and I, my, our text messages. And one of the last messages you sent was giving me the heads up. There was no show. But that was from like October 2022 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought there was no show. So I, I was completely convinced there was no show. Just say, say it was an April Fool's joke. Just, yeah. just say it was an April Fool's joke, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> right? Like, no. Gotcha. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lame April Fool's joke. Like, April yeah. Fool's, I thought we had no show. <laughs> Are you doing April Fools today, Shoggy? I could see you I could see you either no. hating it or putting everything you have into it. No, it's uh no. I that's okay. It's I'm I'm not a fan of it. I, I'm I'm with Eric on it. I just kinda lay low. I don't Yeah. So you'll see something on the, the Twitter and you're like, okay, yeah, uh, you did the thing. Like you're not thing. against it or anything. Like I'm not against it. I just let people have their day and Yeah, you know, let people have their fun. Yeah. I would be annoyed if somebody were to play a significant one on me today and I'd bet I'd be yeah. annoyed. Like the because saran wrap toilet seat or, or yeah. the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Trev got me this morning. I was just pulling in. And I get see I get a text from Trev that says, "Hey man, I don't think I can make it in today." And I was like, "What?" And YouTube Trev is our producer. And he's, he's, I said, "What? Are you sick?" And I'm in full blown panic. I'm like, "I'm gonna have to call Maddie to wake him up, or I'm gonna have to call Zach to come to wake him up." Uh, and then he replies, he goes, "Just kidding, April Fools." And he got me. It was uh, oh, yeah. that was a good one. So, <laughs> Dusty, you were you were in a lot of ways kind of a pioneer of this whole live streaming podcasting thing. And I know back when you started, you know, the oil stream and your other pods and such. You were at the controls for a lot of it. Like you yeah. were running it, you were doing it, you were the man, you were the production, the whole bit, right? And you showed me, you showed me kind of how how you did it. And I wonder if it's the same for you now. Like, you know, because when I started, I was doing the same thing, doing it all myself, and you know, all that kind of stuff. I couldn't do it now. Like it's so far out of my, you know, like well, I've had people doing it. Zuby does it on our show and stuff. Like, could you still exit? Could could the show have still happened? Uh, well, you know, we probably could have for the first hour, mm. um, but with us over here and the computer being over there, I do have a mouse that's wirely, wirelessly connected for some of the other shows, but once like Mike Johnson joined us this morning, I would have had to leave to gone over to the computer, yeah, try yeah. to set it up, and then we schedule four shows every morning, and like they, they push to each other, and I don't technically know how to do that, so it would have been... It'd it would nasty. have been it would have been pretty noticeable that Trev wasn't yeah. here. So hilarious yeah. joke. Stopped my heart for about ninety seconds, but he knew right away to come back and be like, "Just kidding, I'm here." Just I was joking. just like, "Okay, all right, hilarious, really funny, really funny." Uh, all right, Shoggy. Uh, well, let's just quickly get it out of the way because yeah, you are you are very proud of this golf simulator. You've been sending us videos. Have you been hitting the links now? I thought I saw scores on there yesterday. No, so I'm um, still waiting for my launch monitor and ah. my hitting mat to arrive, but that's allowed me some time to kind of refine the room a little bit. So I've just been <laughs> sort of like, I hung a, a golf uh, picture. I, uh, <laughs> I was able to put flooring in where we're not going to be golfing. So I put down some rubber flooring. Uh -huh. Now, what else have I done? Was the TV already in the garage or did you add no. the TV? Yeah, I added the flat screen to the wall. Um, are you going to are you going to call the like the the shed in your backyard like the cabin where you like award the winner you have a sit down you know that type of thing you go yeah. from the garage to the cabin in the in the backyard <laughs> no it's not that uh not that kind of golf that's going to be played in there it's going to be it'll be ugly golf but no it's good man like i've i've wanted to do this for a really long time and so the fact that uh I'm now able to do it. I, I literally am walking the earth feeling that tingle of excitement every second of every day right now. I, part, of, part of me feels like it's a bit of a cry for help and you're going to send us a video of, check it out, I've added a bed to the garage and now I can sleep yeah. out here oh, and no. you've just been like kicked out of your house oh, no. and that's what's happening right now. So flash forward six months, it's yeah. like, well, I got the whole house to myself now, guys. It went great. You'll never yeah, believe this. Literally on my own. <laughs> yeah. Turning the living room into a secondary simulator. I sleep in a race yeah. car. What is yeah. this? Yeah. Uh, all right, Shoggy, the Edmonton Oilers, uh, you know, the Ducks aren't a good team, so but they blew them out. I mean, that's what you could yeah, do yeah. to a team like that. Nice win against the Los Angeles Kings as well. Uh, had that win against the Jets last week. They've, have they found a mix up front? Like, are they starting to sort of lock things in? This is kind of the exact yes. opposite conversation we had last week. Yes. So when uh, when we last spoke, I raised a concern, as I'm sure you guys had and many of your listeners had. If there was one concern as they were heading towards the playoffs, it was 
that there wasn't the line continuity and the line chemistry developing that you would want and that it was a little bit all over the place. Now, somewhat understandable given the piece that they added at the trade deadline, being as versatile as he is, he can play wing, he can play center, up, down, wherever. Uh, and given Evander Kane's drop in, in, uh, in offensive contribution, uh, that created a bit of an issue for them. And so it took Chris Knobloch a little bit. But I think, they've, I think they've got a matrix now. I think they've got a setup now that seems to make sense and that seems to work. Um, so I, I could see the lines they're rolling out right now, guys, being the lines on opening night. Whereas before, if you'd asked me, I wouldn't have had much of a clue. Ryan, I just, I asked Mike Johnson earlier today, and, and how would you go about handling this, uh, this stretch for the Oilers here? Of course, final month of regular season, uh, four games in six days this week against some pretty heavy competition. Uh, but then 10 in the final, uh, 18 here. Um, like, does, does it matter to you catching the Canucks? I know winning the division for the fans, for the team, I mean, getting that banner, all of those things, but we've talked a lot about this team and the health that they've had. So how far do you, mm -hmm. would you push? How far do you kind of, I mean, you don't want to go in resting guys, you know, six, seven, whatever game is out, but you also want to go in. I mean, we've even identified the final game Oilers Avs as maybe a night where McDavid and McKinnon have to go at it. So how, how do you kind of approach this thing knowing, you know, again, the team's had great health playoffs. You're going to, you're, you're in, you're on the horizon but does it matter where you're at given the fact that you'll yeah. probably get the same competition? Yeah, it really does, in my opinion. I don't think you take your foot off the pedal at all right now. I think you, I mean, you keep icing your best lineups. Maybe you try and get, you know, make sure you're not nobody's sitting out for too long because you might need everybody in the playoffs, so you give everybody a chance to play. I think the areas where I think they can maybe let their foot off the pedal a little bit is I think they can back off Skinner starts a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the pace that he's been starting games at, I think you're okay. Calvin Pickard's numbers are phenomenal in the month of March. Of all goaltenders who started five or more games, I think he was third uh, in which one was it? Was it save percentage or was it? Well, third in one of the two important stats. So bottom line, he, he played great in the month of March. So you can probably back off Skinner starts a little bit. There's three sets of back-to-backs. So you know he's going to get at least three games, but honestly, I would I'd look at maybe six starts for Skinner, yeah, five six starts kind of thing, and and just make sure he's sharp. But I think it's really important, guys, that that they they continue to push hard here, because this team has seen when it goes the wrong way for them how far it can go the wrong way, and they want no part of that in their game as they head towards the playoffs. They have to they got to keep sharp. They got to start games on time. They got to bring their game, not wait to see, well, how hard is the competition going to try tonight? And we'll just try a little bit harder for like 10 minutes and win the game. They got to they gotta develop good in-game habits right now and keep those. So um, standings aside, I would be pushing hard if I were Chris Knobloch, demanding a lot from these guys, making sure that the habits stay firm. And and you know what? Honestly, Dusty, I think, you know, the likes of McDavid and Dreisaitl and Nurse and Hyman, those guys, I think they're going to, command that keep going right yeah they know how important this is they're not going to let the standard drop here down the stretch uh Connor mcdavid he's on the verge he's going to hit 100 assists at some point this mm -hmm. week last year went into the season scores over 60 goals was shooting yeah. the puck a ton this year he's shooting the puck significantly less but he's putting up these insane assist totals and i know mcdavid's all about playing the way he needs to play for the team to win but it's hard not to look at him dialing back his shots by like 100 this year and passing like an insane amount to hit over 100. Probably going to get to like 110 assists this year. Is this is this by design? Did he think that he needs to get his teammates more involved for the team to have success? Or is this just – yeah. this sounds crazy to me, but I think he's good enough that he could be like, you know what, I'm going to get 100 assists this year. And then he goes yeah. out and does it. Like where, do, where does this come from after last year being so – driven to the net with shooting the puck and that desire to score. He's going to get like 30 goals this year. Last year he had 65. Like, it's crazy. Isn't it crazy, right? Like, he decides one year, all right, I'll see if I can get 60 goals, be the best goal scorer in the game. So he just decided he to try that for <laughs> like, a year. It was like, dry side, I was like, hey, why don't you try this? And he was like, I could try that. Well, I think you should try that. Okay, I'm going to try that. And then, boom, he's the best goal scorer in the game for a year, right? Shooting sniping remember how good i mean that snapshot right like he was flat out beating goalies clean good yep. goalies clean um from distance with a snapshot um never had a great slap shot but really it's almost like he just yeah i think he kind of decides yeah, this you know this is what i'm gonna do it's like he's and playing he a video game it. and you got to check off different boxes yeah. to get like credits yeah, yeah. And it's rewards a, yeah, yeah and that's what rewards 100 assists yeah. like, the side quest yeah yeah exactly <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, he's that good. And I think if McDavid, any given year where McDavid decides I'm going to focus on being uh, a goal scorer the same way he did last year, he'll be in the fight for the goal scoring race. I just think when he applies himself to an area of his game, he's just that good that he becomes the best in the world at it. Uh, the thing is, is you can't, you can't apply that level of effort to every aspect of your game every year. You can't. You, I mean, you have to focus on things, right? And you could spread it around a little bit, sure, like a nice combination of both, maybe. But he tends to he tends to focus in, and now he's just his assists are off the charts. They're brilliant. His his some of the passes he's making and the assists he's getting are just unreal. So it's pretty cool to watch. But would it surprise anybody if he led the playoffs in goals? No, I wouldn't be surprised. No. Nothing. I mean, that could be the biggest the trick ever. Start, like, yeah, yeah. When the playoffs start, it's like, well, you really need to win. You need to score goals tonight to win. And he just might be so desperate to win that he's there is no way he's passing up a good shooting opportunity in the playoffs. His mindset might shift. It might be different in a playoff game than over eighty-two games. So. Uh, let's just see what he decides and let's enjoy watching. 30 goals in the regular season, 20 during a Stanley Cup run. Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Like what he decides yeah. though. As yeah, you said, it depends yeah. on if it needs to be accomplished or not. Like, yeah. It's pretty, he is it's so pretty laser ridiculous. focused, guys. Yeah. Like, he is so laser focused. I've noticed it, you know, with each passing year and with each of their disappointments, you talk about how you need to feel some of that pain to really be able to get yourself in the right place. And, uh, you know, I see in his media availabilities, I see him in practice. I see like he is as laser focused as I've ever seen. And this assist thing, like he doesn't really have any interest in talking about it. He's just so focused on his game and his teammates game being where it needs to be um, because they felt that pain. And that's a lot of talk about the Vancouver Canucks right now, you know, how good they are. Mm. And I think they're a good team and they've had a fantastic regular season and good for them. But they haven't experienced they don't have those scars. You know, as a group together, they don't have the same level of scars. And it'll be interesting to see how those scars help propel the Oilers into the playoffs here. Shaggy, I think uh, David Staples was tweeting about this yesterday. I thought it was an interesting question. Which Edmonton Oiler this season do you think has been underrated by fans or by the opposition? I think it's more of a underappreciated maybe for what they've done so far this season. Is there one guy that kind of jumps off the page for you? That's a really good question. Let me think about that for a minute. Underrated, underappreciated by fans for their. I I went with Fogel. I'll just pass my answer along. I went yeah. with Fogel. Like he's he's on the verge of scoring twenty. He has been consistent from the very beginning. Remember when they weren't playing well? Yeah. Like Fogel and Kane were playing okay. You're, and yeah. you know he's 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 done what I think he's done more than what you required of him. So I don't know. I don't think we talk about Fogel ever. And he's putting together a pretty decent seasons. So. Yeah, no, I think that's a good answer because I think what you need on a championship caliber team is you need guys that are maybe playing above their heads a little bit. And Fogel has given them a legitimate option on their top two lines that they otherwise would not have had, right? How many how many guys have they tried over yeah. the years that they were hoping would be that guy? Excuse me. And so he's come in and it's been a little bit up and down. But he's been as consistent in that spot as anybody and scoring 17 goals, you know, 37 points here in his 72 games. And he's not even playing 14 minutes a night, you know, to have that kind of production. Yeah, I, I think he's a I think he would be a pretty good candidate for that. Um, just trying to think if there's anyone else that uh, Pick, is Pickard's really getting a lot of love on our uh, nasty messages chat as well, on Pickard. Which for sure, makes Pickard. sense too, as you said earlier. Sure, Ryan. Pickard. Like what he came in and did from where his career was at. Um, it was really, really impressive. So I would definitely have him pretty high up on that list as well. But the, I mean, that's what you need, right? You need guys that come in and, and uh, kick their coverage a little bit. And they've had a few guys do that. And that's, and that's good. Shaggy, uh, we'll let you get back to work on the sim. And uh, when, when's the projected <laughs> first round? Like what's happening here? Um, yeah, so hoping to get the core components in sometime this week uh, <laughs> in the next couple of days. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm in there hitting. I've got a, I've got a, a small mat that I bought. Okay, you so you've just been like, like yeah. when you're setting it up, you have to hit while you're setting it up to be testing it out, right? Just to be making sure you don't have any bad ricochets and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've actually redone it multiple times because <laughs> it just, you, it honestly, it, it has to be the right feel and fit because what you can't have is you can't have balls coming back at your head, you know, yeah, with, yeah. with velocity. Because it messes with your swing. So now it gets into your head every time you're swinging. You're like, eh, 
<laughs> so you can't have that at all. So you did you have a couple of close game. calls or what? Speaking from experience? No, oh, okay. nothing too close, but a few that were like riding up the screen and bouncing too far back. Yeah. And so then what I realized you had to do is you, your ceiling padding couldn't be tight to the ceiling. What I did is I hung mats that actually kind of loop and they're off the ceiling now. So when a ball rides up the screen and goes up, it hits the pad on the ceiling. It just dies and dies right there. So lots of trial and error, lots of experimenting. And uh, I've hammered my thumbs and fingers and driven screw, you know, screw yeah. guns into my nails. Like it's you're like, uh, you're like McDavid here going through the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs, eh? Yeah, like the scarring and everything. Her. Yeah, I did say there was going to be one or two significant injuries in this process. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't even see that. Where's my thumbnail? There, my thumb is. Oh yeah, is yeah. Black. Oh, oh buddy, my oh. thumbnail is black and God. broke. So. Man, you could never work in the patch. Eh? <laughs> 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 Me yeah, neither. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll uh, catch up next week. Okay. Have a great Monday. There guys. you go. That's uh, Ryan Rashog. Uh, funny thing is, we were never actually streaming. <laughs> we just set them up. April Fools. <laughs> There's no show today. We yeah, just did this show just all along. Yeah, Jokes just... on you, Ryan. We did a whole Jokes big show all, yeah. for three hours. And we were never streaming for the entire time. That's uh, that's good. Man, Shoggy, when he goes all in on something, he goes all in on something. Now, when he said the ball is like rolling up his thing, to me that means he's sculling it and it's like hitting the bottom and then rolling all the way up. Because if yeah, you hit a smooth one, it should not just kind of go into the wall. Some and then, bad shots, I think, is kind of yeah. where, where we're taking away from that, hey? Well, I guess that's why you got the simulator. <laughs> to, to better his to game. To kind of yeah. uh, improve your game a little bit there. That would uh, that would make sense. Stoffer for Premier says, LTIR awaits for Ryan Rashog. Yeah. That probably coming down the pipe here at some point. That's a good question. Uh, like, I'm, I'm not stealing it from Staples. I'm giving him credit for it. No, yeah. I mean, he's just asking a question of who he thinks is the most underrated or underappreciated oiler either <laughs> around the league or with the fans or the media. Evan and, Bouchard. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> on, on I certain, was going back and forth on the Bouchard it's, it's conversation a funny, with well, a few can, people last yeah. night. Um, Fogel's but I do think Fogel, I think Fogel's probably the answer. Yeah, really. Kyle Liam Bomber says contract year Fogel, uh, but Pickard as well. I mean, given given that area of of you know the the position backup goaltending, the camp has stuff. Pickard not got enough love for backup even from people in the like, market. And do you that's think? the question too. Not enough. I think he's been getting his. I love. think he's got how much how much love. more love does he require or need at this point? But I guess to sum up the questions, just kind of your unheralded, yeah, steady Eddie, I've, yeah, the steady uh, Eddie uh, of, of the season, season. yeah, yeah. For EM utility locating, and I, I think I think Fogel career high in points, career high it's in a assists. Good show. It's a great career show. high yeah. in goals. You sit here and constantly go, oh, what are you going to do? You need a top six. Need a top six. Need a top six. He's a good chance. There's a chance he scores twenty this year. Kane has twenty one. Nuge has seventeen. Nuge has the same amount of goals as Warren Fogel this year. I think Fogel's a good answer here. But if you want to chime in on 780-218-9999, Rip City Steps says Kulak. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah well, Kulak always sort of flies under the radar. That's this whole thing. If you're not talking about Kulak, it's good. Uh, there's Shoggy Guy, your back podcast in the chat. Ten feet high in the swing area. Nine feet where the uh, where the screen is. Yeah, some people are also asking the financial commitment, Ryan, and I don't know if you want to make that public, but uh, <laughs> a few people might be sliding into your DMs later today. Like, is it a second mortgage? Is it not a second <laughs> mortgage? Who knows? Um, Again, maybe uh, the other uh, theory we had, you don't get the house, but you can keep the garage. <laughs> you know, right? Like, maybe that's it, what it is. Yeah. Like that, right? That's why I kind of joked about him sleeping on a bed. I'm just quietly being, you know, guys, I got a fridge and a bed. Innocently, how we find out over the weeks, yeah. every week is a new appliance. And then, yeah. You pop kinda... by to see Shoggy and he's got one of those jackhammers and he's in there, he's digging in. What are you doing, man? Oh, I'm just putting in plumbing. Yeah. I get a toilet out here now, too. Yeah. Don't touch the thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Oilers and the St. Louis Blues tonight. I'm going to get that set up with your orange and blue breakfast. Glory, glory, <laughs> glory, glory, I think I got your number, glory, blues, <laughs> oilers, 
Orange and blue breakfast. I'm glad we got to mix that back in I'm today. I'm really eh? glad. I had to watch that video again. I got to get the full. Oh, just. Yeah, yeah that's how you get the full experience. experience yeah. Full experience. Orange and blue breakfast, as it has been all season, brought to you by Mobile One and Blue Water Lubricants. And the Blue Water Group was founded in 1974, and it has become Canada's largest independent distributor of mobile branded lubricants. You think that happens overnight? No chance. They want to thank everyone for uh, 50 great years. Blue Water Lubricants, founded in 1984. Ha! April Fools, 1974 is when the Blue Water Group was founded. Stop it. Man, I am killing it with April Fools jokes today. Oilers and Blues tonight. The Edmonton Oilers, second place in the Pacific. The St. Louis Blues also currently holding down a playoff spot. You, April Fools. That's enough of this. <laughs> they're not even in the playoffs. You're taking I'll this stop. way too. I'll stop. I'd but like they're, to they're say fighting I'm for one. Player. They are fighting. They need. They need. How far it. out are they? Right they now? need it. They, they, we are looking right yeah. now. The Blues five points back of the Kings. The Kings holding a game in hand. Yeah, it's not impossible. It's not, it's not impossible. It's not but impossible. you need it. You, you. They need to play. And and I think the last game, what they lose against the, the, the Flames or something like that. I mean, they 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 had a game they should have won last game. So what was they're, all they're that one in a million talk? Hanging by a thread here. Got to get it. Here's what the St. Louis Blues were last rolling. Robert Thomas between Jake Neighbors and Buchnevich. Braden Shen with Kairou and Brandon Saad. Kevin Hayes with Torpchenko and Bull Duke. Nathan Walker, Sammy Blaze, and Kasperi and Kapanen. This is coming off Saturday's 4 nothing loss to the Sharks. That if you're, if you're oh, trying for a wild card back. and you lose to the Sharks. They beat the Flames on the Thursday, lost oh, to the Sharks. That. Shout out to the Sharks on Saturday. I was on the Blues over two and a half goals in that game. Totally backfired. <laughs> they went. They went blue, as they say in betting. Can't win them all, and uh, missed on that one. Uh, Nick Letty, Pareko, Krug, and Kessel, Perunovic, and Justin Falk on the uh, back end for the St. Louis Blues, Edmonton Oilers. McDavid, Hyman, Nuge, Drysaddle, Fogel, and Henrique McLeod, Perry, and Kane, Carrick, Ryan, and Matthias Yanmark. You kind of rotate Brown and Ryan and Carrick kind of in and out here, eh? Just keep them, get, get that. Uh, <laughs> they all get a chance to play yeah. with Matthias Janmark. Keep him fresh. As he closes in on 10 points or whatever it is <laughs> so far. Oh, he's got 11. He's got 11. He's got 11 points already. Uh, is home, that an April Fool's joke? No, no. Okay. no the, Ekholm, Bouchard, Nurse, and we'll see who's on the right side there. And then DeHarnay, Kulak. Well, Trev, were you uh, you were pretty happy? Was it uh, the Stetcher game? What was your hot take on Saturday? Was that on season. Saturday? Uh, big Stetcher uh, guy over here. Yeah, I think I put. Uh uh, I don't know. I kind of ripped in a little bit, but um, I, I think I said from the first period, I've seen more of Stetcher uh, this first period than I have from Vinny DeHarnay all month. Oh, man. And See, those are yeah, the same people. Admits, uh, that's a myth. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Some they, people were like, oh, I didn't know it was Thursday. But uh, yeah, he was like very noticeable. Very, He was jumping in on the rush like quite a bit, I think. And uh, he drew a penalty. It would have been a goal. He was like wide open. Uh, he got tripped there, though. And um, yeah, like I thought he looked really good. I don't know how you're taking this guy out. I, I know Vinny did get two assists he did that two game, assists, and he does yeah. but I mean, celebration at the end with the, yeah, yeah, and then that. he, which is saying guys is that's an asset. You gotta right? have you have to look at that in there. team continuity. What if what if after playoff games, if he wasn't in, he just got dressed like you know how they do right before you win a Stanley Cup, and he just comes out at the end of the game and still does Vinny and still do that. Skinny Winnie, could you or not do that? You could do that. Too. I mean, yeah, 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 the Vinny Skinny Winnie. That's uh, <laughs> they could still do that. Uh, Lieutenant Eric, uh, list of guys who aren't tough enough to play hockey tonight. Hurts so good for the Blues Oscar Sundquist listed as day today, and Josh Jacobs residing on the IR since the start of the season. For the Edmonton Oilers, Cody Cece listed as day today with an illness, and Brady Stonehouse on the IR from October 8th. All right. Your key to a victory tonight against the St. Louis Blues on the road in St. Louis. Blues are 31-3 and 1-win scoring first this season. Holy uh, smokes. Scoring, but one of those losses are against the Oilers. So. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. What does it all mean? I don't know. Nobody but, knows. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, score first, probably go a long way uh, today, just given that that stat and that number. Um, and just, again, this is much like Saturday. These are teams now you should be beating. Nothing against the Blues. And I know I kind of jokingly said they're they're fighting for a wild card. But if you're dropping a 4 nothing to the Sharks, in the midst of that fight, um, we can't be taking it too serious. So, say, uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's going on? What oh, is this? Oh, man. Get over here. 
slide in here. What is what is Come the what in. is the delivery look, look, here? Look on the camera. We gotta do Look it. at this. Marshall. He's doing it. He's doing it. Thanks. Do you want to beg? We can just split it. Marshall has owed oh, Lieutenant wow. Eric. Thanks. Marshall, Marshall, hop on the mic there for one second. I have to ask you a question. Why did it take you so get right down by the mic there, buddy? Why did it take you so long to pay Lieutenant Eric his chips? I, I don't really know. You don't really know? No. Lizzie, why do you think it took him so long? Uh, he was busy. He was busy. That's a, that's yeah. good thinking, Muzz. Nice yeah. job. Do you want to wave to everybody? Oh, thanks. You can wave to people over there. Look. There you go. Say. And Nielsen always pays his debts. That was from two great cups ago. Good girl. Still tastes the same. Marsh, too. good work, buddy. That's a uh, <laughs> job well done. Big delivery. Box of chips. Tell you that, man. I'm feeling good. That's that from hockey what, the 2022 Grey yeah, Cup. I'm telling you. 2022 Grey Cup. He's from 2022 as well, right? Like he's been sitting on the he's, box. He's probably yeah, had yeah, it forever. Yeah. As I Elizabeth said, he was busy. <laughs> he's busy. You know, it's just funny because that's the exact excuse I make when I like well, wait whatever. to pay McCord on the bracket and stuff. Nobody needs to know the ah, details. Sorry, I'm busy. You're busy. Yeah, no, that was uh, good enough. That was good. Oh, nice little visit for that the kids great. today. No school today. Still, that's, uh, no school. Uh, nice life. Uh, all right, my game day prediction today. Hmm. Let's go. You're riding the horse still. I mean, we all know that. That hasn't bucked you off yet. Uh, you know, I'm going to. Well, yeah, but that's uh, that's a different. That was our cool bet yeah. hotline of the day. I, I am going to say we get overtime tonight. The last time these guys played, they went to overtime. Whoa! And so I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. If you want to sprinkle it, overtime's plus three fifty-five tonight. If you want to, but I'm gonna. Yeah, my game day prediction is we go to uh, overtime tonight in this game. I think where there's probably win, but who knows? But uh, a point for both sides tonight. They can Everybody have their gets wild a point. Card race and, and the Oilers uh, in pursuit of the division. Everybody, Everybody gets Everybody a point wins, yeah. this evening. Uh, all right, that is your orange and blue breakfast. For Mobile One, Blue Water Group, since 1974, 50 years these guys have been churning. They are Canada's largest independent distributor of mobile branded lubricants. If you want your vehicle to run, get it done with Mobile One. Hangouts coming up. Everybody's rolling in. Tommy's here. Maddie's here. Millard's here. Montajon's here. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's, Muzz it's is a bunch of oops. Oh, the Muzz. <laughs> it's a bunch of M's in here today. It's Marshall, Muzz, Montajon, Millard, Maddie, and Mr. Handsome, Tommy and, and Gazzola. Mother. And, and, and mummy. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get into the wrap for William Hoff. If you want your place to look as good as ours, Bruce and the uh, the super team over at William Hoff, they've been doing it since 1972. This is why the city looks so darn beautiful. I don't know if they built the beautiful bridge downtown, but I feel like they probably did because they improve with how good our city looks. WilliamHuff.com. Eric, what did you learn on the show today, buddy? Well, I learned that a Nielsen always pays his debts. <laughs> like, this kind of swooped years. in here really late. Uh, I, I'm shocked. And as somebody points out, too, maybe the box is empty. April Fool's, huh? wouldn't that be something? No, that would be hilarious. Uh, a, a spin that even I would I, I would love. In I'd terms respect of this, that move. I don't think it is, but. Great cup bet. Uh, this is amazing. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm when was the last it. time you had the bag box of chips chip? out of the box? Well, and it's usually like uh, onion and garlic or some weird. Fl- like the ripples yeah, are yeah. strong. I love a ripple chip. Should have brought you some dip as interest on the uh, on the bag. I'll take care of that tonight. But everything's uh, turning up. You NC I State it was ju- to the Final Four. <laughs> now State to the Final Four. Two bags. I offered Marshall a bag out of the box. He said, "No, take the box." Oh, he was he. he, he, he said, it's, "Yeah, it's, had so, to pay up." That's kind of what's really kind of it's blowing everything out of yeah. the water for me this morning. I learned today that uh, YouTube Trev won April Fools. Mind you, Nasty Chat took a good run at it too. Well, three yeah. more hours left. That had me. That had me for sure. Yeah, we During, were both panicking. I was like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Your heartbeat goes up when people are like, the chat's not working. We can't it's, hear you. It's nerve-wracking, especially when you don't know what the problem was. Because from all I saw, I'm like, it should be coming through. So yeah. I, I was scared. I honestly was. I was like, and I was kind of just chilling. Everything was going smooth, too. And I was like, ah, dang it. We didn't see anything wrong. So you'd be like, well, yeah, what's yeah. Going I'm on? like, what What could they possibly Your be house here? house on fire. No, it's not. <laughs> Real nice <laughs> start to the show, and then that happens. And then a teeth. 20 yeah. minutes later. Oh, Missed the cue. Man. That was so good. That was hey, good. guys. Hey, <laughs> guys. No one just like. <laughs> What's good? A teeth rolls in 30 minutes later. Guys, I can't hear anything. And everybody else is like, a teeth, where are you? You ruined it. You ruined it. What are you doing, a teeth? Uh, all right. Let's get to your sound of the day today. You're on the wrap for William Huff. Uh, sound of the day. We use this eventually on text of the day, so let's go to it. LeBron James working with Claxton in front of him. It's going up. LeBron. Here it goes. 
<laughs> LeBron. He is the man. He is the man. That gives me one more chance to point out that LeBron went well, they do nine say of LeBron 10. LeBron is the man. I mean, they, in the nine of, of ten from beyond the arc. Yeah. Nine of ten. Forty years old. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 points. Thirty-nine years old. Forty points. Thirty-nine years old. Best to ever do it. He's almost a man. <laughs> yeah, imagine when he becomes a man. Well, then you're going. Oh my for god! Sure, yeah, yeah. he's going to win three titles after becoming a man. That'd be pretty insane. Uh, anyway, the uh, text of the day today, and we had some good texts yeah, I, coming yeah. out of that clip. This was the clip. We we clipped the end of it. It was good. It was real nice. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> LeBron, he is the man. Text of the day today, and this is good. North Side Sandwich. A king in the 1700s who has eight daughters and his fourth wife finally gives birth to their first male heir. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> LeBron. He is the man! Yes. <laughs> Real nice. North Side Sandwich. Text of the day for A&W. Go get it. Get some of those juicy mamas. The Nasties also have crowned their king. Apparently, Box Pounder was the man that, that initiated this whole... Uh, Crown him a king. Audio dropped and all dare that. dare I uh, say yeah. a traitor. Well, and we'll have to remember that old yeah. Box Pounder. Yeah, yeah we uh, got you now. now. now Guess you. who's not coming to the Nasty Bash this year? <laughs> <laughs> Golf tournament. Oops, lost the invite. Oh, sorry, right? like, sorry. Oh, you're not in. <laughs> you're not in. Uh, the uh, two Juicy Mama Burgers are on special till April 14th. So you got to move on this. And today only... The two Juicy Mama Burgers are two of them for two ninety nine. April Fools! I just been killing them all you're, day. You're in the zone. Killing now. them all day. Can't get can't get out of it. Can't get out of the way. Uh, all right, Eric, what are you watching tonight, buddy? Uh, Oilers Blues seven o'clock. That means a five thirty uh, oil stream pregame show with Tom Gazzola and YouTube Trev. Keep an eye on that. Uh, a few other interesting games around the NHL tonight as well. Jets at home to the Kings. Red Wings Lightning. Uh, Islanders Flyers. Panthers Maple Leafs from the T-Dot. Other than that, I mean, I know the Women, Raps, Women's March Madness. Women's March Madness. I know your Raps-Lakers game is tomorrow. Uh, Jays, that three-game set begins tonight later in Houston. First pitch, 6-10. And, uh, yeah, Women's March Madness as well. LSU, Iowa, UConn, USC. There's some history there between LSU and Iowa. Oh, yeah, the, the rematch. Oh, yeah. Caitlin Clark, she struts her stuff. She's phenomenal. Um, but that's going to be interesting tonight. Iowa right now, two-and-a-half-point favorites against LSU. Uh, that is going to be a must-watch basketball game tonight. First thing, Rip City set. Texted in this morning. Yeah. Just all about it. Counting down. Well, USC, Connecticut, huge game as well. That'll be the second one. This Iowa LSU game tonight starts at 5 15 uh, Edmonton time. And uh, if you haven't watched Caitlin Clark play ball yet, I mean, she's, she's the one that Ice Cube offered $5 million to to go play in the big three. Which part of me thinks she should consider it. Like five mil? Well, a little something like before four, uh, five times as much as the highest salary in the uh, in the WNBA. Before hockey night in St. Louis, that's kind of the uh, the appetizer. It's a nice little appetizer, yeah. yeah to wet the wet the whistle. Uh, Wheels is in. It says, "Any ideals for April Fool's Day, twenty twenty five? Wheels trying to get on <laughs> trivia right now. Hey, is that what he's trying to do? <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh, that was a ridiculous. game wheels, a game. Uh, all right, that is uh, that's going to do it for the Nielsen Show today. We got a jam packed hangout coming up. Next chance to get in on the ESC Flyway to Vegas coming up on the hangout. Uh, Matt Awanek, Tommy Gazola. Tommy, you get a haircut? Yeah. Ah, Trev, do you notice that too? Trev notices haircuts really good. That's. <laughs> Did he notice? He of course it. he, he did. It. He's very good. Except so, Trev. Quickly on the hang, on the haircut thing, we were talking about it yesterday, and he goes, "You know what? what?" Because Matt called him out. He goes, "One time he didn't notice my haircut." No. And Trev, what'd you say? You still question he actually got one? I <laughs> I, I don't believe that he actually got one because I I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm never wrong or like honestly, like I honestly think he's pulling my you leg stand by because your I yeah I don't know, and he keeps bothering me. He's well, you missed mine, but I'm like I I don't think he actually had a haircut because. I, I never miss. I'm sorry. And I always notice confirmed. your hair. It's just one his word against George. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maddie gets no. a haircut like every three weeks. That's a tough call. 
Yeah, he's setting it like a yeah, setting yeah, to watch it's, every it's, day. It's it's uh, all right, anyway, Tom Gazzola, Matt Awanek, Dean Millard, Jerry Montejon coming up on the Hangout today. Another chance to qualify for the EST Flyway to Vegas with Fly YEG as well. I'll be back with the Lock Shop with Huss today at 11. And the Oil Stream, myself and Tommy coming up at uh, noon today. Qual chances to qualify for the EST Flyway on all of those shows as well. For YouTube, Trev and Lieutenant Eric, I'm Dustin Nielsen. Tell your friends about EST. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day and take it easy.